And if we talk, now 500,000 they go summer us, call them hate speech. But fear not, my ego don't come. In go touch light every corner, nooks and cranny of all these bad, bad people where they spoil our country. <laughs> so my people make me love Every corner. Okay, some people be they hala say they want the power. Chai. Them be promise us say we go get light and power. Nah, nah. Them hustle so they so they they can't get the power. Hmm. But now they know they do anything with the power. Sheer. Every day dollar just they get the higher power. Over naira, see them talk say make we off mind. But then go say my ego don't come. So my people make you loud. Like oh, yeah, yeah. The emperor is not gonna kind of like that. Now they need to probe uh, the little finger, the little devil, and all he did in Kaduna. I wouldn't say it is in your own interest. <laughs> See, every time that these uh, rogues are supposedly hmm, fighting themselves, do not share. I'm sorry, you do, don't try to share, I mean, share them up. Don't uh, get involved in their war. Dele Paruti me advised us not to die in their war. Don't jump up and think there's something spectacular that uh, you are going to get from them fighting. No, because most of the time they are in fighting eh, is because of probably like access. If they do not have access, like a lot of you don't, they scream louder and the loudest. And whenever they want to kind of uh, silence one of them, for the reasons that is best known to them, right? Great. But here is your own catch. Every time the criminals in Nigeria kind of go after themselves, it's an opportunity for you to see through the mad country that somehow you are telling yourself will be great one day. And they, they, they mean, exposing themselves is another opportunity too eh, for you to know why Nigeria can never eh, succeed or survive. Except for these ones that you are witnessing, you know, using the blood of uh, the innocent to sort of uh, keep Nigeria together. Events like this are just reminders. So good morning to you once again, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are joining me from. It is my life, and we are starting our story. It's kind of a two-wing, by the way, and so many other feathers, okay? But the two-winged chat tonight, one is coming from Kaduna, where if you are from Kaduna, eh, Celia, this should interest you. Before El Rufaya, before APC, there was no bloodbath or war in southern Kaduna until the terror sympathizer 
and an alleged terror sponsor, El Rufaya of Kaduna, became their governor, and all El was let loose. Southern Kaduna became graveyards, courtesy the armed Islamic terrorists, Fulani terrorists. They wreaked havoc, and under the cover and protection of El Rufaya, eh, they were operating freehand. To make the matter worse, El Rufaya hired enough hands to help tell the whole world that the victims of uh, the terrorism in Southern Kaduna under him, they were not victims. They were just, they were actually the aggressors. How can you be aggressors to those who came to meet you on your own indigenous land, ancestral land, the land of your own forebearers, armed and started slaying and slot, you know, slaughtering people? And then you turn around to tell the old world, they say, no, you are the aggressor. In fact, you are doing it because of the money people are going to donate for you because you are a Christian. Oh, some Christian countries are going to give them money. I mean, the governor of a state that was supposed to be under attack of Islamic terrorists, Fulani terrorists, their governor began accusing the victims of being the aggressors. They are the ones who are those making all this trouble and run into the media because Christian countries donate money to the victims of terror attacks in Nigeria. El Rufaya as their governor, not only that he dismissed the problems they were facing, he actually accused them of creating the problems. El Rufaya said, Southern Kaduna Christians were the ones who were burning their churches so that they can collect donation. I mean, that was their governor. But yet, he was able as well mm, to mobilize enough Uluri Brukus from across Nigeria. The educated uh, Bele Lecturacy to help keep propagating and say, ah, air of fire, an amazing administrator. Ah, now you need to visit Kaduna. Ah, I just rich Kaduna now. Oh my God, you need to blah, blah, blah. That didn't last. Because even in their own 2023 charity, APC, Egbe was resoundingly rejected. To the point that El Rufaya started begging his uh, fellow Islamic jihadist, especially Islamic jihadist fanatics from Kaduna, within Kaduna, and outside Kaduna, El Rufaya was praised by this uh, terrorist. Why Southern Kaduna bombs? It was the best thing that ever happened to their Uthman Danfudio jihadist the descendants the descendants is is the development like the like kaduna northern kaduna is kaduna southern kaduna is not part of kaduna and whatever happened there it is to help the people of southern kaduna killing them taking over their communities their villages, their farms, sending them to IDP camps, internally displaced persons camps, to these terrorists, Islamic terrorists from northern Nigeria. That El Rufaya is part of them, is to help those people. At least they were infidels anyway. So killings in southern Kaduna to this Islamic terrorist uh, from the northern Kaduna and outside the Kaduna eh, is only been exaggerated. Kinigan, what? Is it today that they are just killing people? Why are you exaggerating it? It's not that bad. You are only exaggerating it because you wanted the Elder Fire to look bad. Oh my God, we actually 
suffer those kind of uh, gaslighting for eight years for that cardinal little fingers. But suddenly, the little finger didn't have his way inside the Kolu Tifnumbu's illegitimate regime. And guess who was uh, the antagonist who stopped El Rufaya from parading himself all about like uh, Wiriwike is currently doing? His own uh, and picked QG. I mean, they love that for cover up. After spending eight years, I mean, eight uh, wasteful years destroying people's lives and properties and livelihood. They still wanted their asses to be covered, never to be exposed. So therefore, they will fight tooth and nail to install a G, a cover as their successor. And they will do anything. They will move the mount, they will move the earth, and they will move everyone to ensure of that. All to cover all of their shady criminalities. But historically, they have never really succeeded in covering their asses because their excesses can only be merely tolerated by their own and picked successors. There come the fights, the fights of control, the fights of uh, freedom, kind of control and freedom. And that is what is playing out uh, in uh, Kaduna. But before that, El Rufaya, like I told you, by his paid ass not to uh, tell the world that uh, he is in fact a potential presidential candidate, a future president of Nigeria. Well, it seemed that uh, El Rufaya had been uh, outplayed in his own game of treasury because his name was forwarded as minister to the same National Assembly controlled by his own party, where all manner of uh, illegality, criminality had produced their party as the majority. So why would they refuse him? Why would they reject him? It was so shocking until the report came later that he was always he has always been considered a dangerous person even by his own friends all of these were just them trying to tolerate him but now it seems his excesses can no longer be tolerated so it was a matter of time before he would start firing uh, Zipnumbu at Zipnumbu's government it was going to be a, a matter of time before it will begin to want to assert its authority over the Stuji he installed. It was all going to be a matter of time. And as El Rufaya, somebody who has never really done any real job in his life, he has never been any, he's never successful in anything meaningful in his life, except for all those uh, useless, never useful courses they always go to. Those uh, three weeks, two weeks uh, courses in Harvard, Oxford, eh, where they went to go and get validation to present themselves as uh, orators, administrators, managers of men, only for them to have the opportunity of actually reciprocating what they believe they must have learned from those places. Then their result comes back as abysmal failure, laced with uh, self aggrandizement, corruption, and name it. Eh? So, yes, El Rufaya, for some reason, was able to put the woods over the eyes of uh, the non initiates. I'm talking about uh, the few who are ignorant enough to see all those glossy, painted, uh, you know, uh, uh, stories put out there. While they are victims, they are real victims. El Rufaya, using the state instrument to attack the people of his own support set states that he was supposed to protect, he decided to release them to the wolves, the wolves they intentionally brought upon them. Then he turned around to victimize them. Tell me about uh, if they teach them that in Harvard or Oxford 
and some of these uh, Ivy League uh, universities or whatever all over the world that they currently sort of a flaunt on their different CVs. Come administration, they are born criminals. There's no amount of Harvard education or Harvard exposure. There's no amount of uh, foreign exposure that will stop greedy people from ruining everything. That is beautiful. And that's exactly what El Rufaya represented. So like I said, it was a matter of time. He had no real job. Just like all your politicians, 99% of your politicians are a bunch of uh, jobless, careerless, nothing to show for rogues. I will tell you they are doctors, they are this, they are that, they are engineers, they are this and that. But yet they are foisted on you. A shit hole. No apology, by the way. So let's go to it. About three weeks ago, eh, Kaduna Little Finger started moving mad. Having been rejected by the National Assembly for God knows, they said El Rufaya was a security threat. They didn't say more than that. How could I be a security threat? Who told you that? Sonny, the clown. The guy, he used all his might to install so that he could cover his ass. At choosing otherwise, he was out to show to everybody who El Rufaya is and possibly get his own supposed freedom. So that El Rufaya will no longer be in any way influential into whatever will happen. And Kaduna, don't ignore that. But I have once told all of us here on this platform, because I do believe that, all right, that if uh, all of us understand that uh, the enemy we are against, the establishment, which comprises of uh, everyone from every part of Nigeria, when you look at uh, the basket of uh, the establishment in Nigeria, all religion are part of them, all uh, tribes and ethnic nationalities are part of them. They are like a coven, a coven of evil people that could only eh, survive on evil. So when you understand the magnitude, you know, when you understand the, the, the level of a power at the disposal, of uh, these criminals and you begin to look beyond your typical individualism you know some of us believe that when you look at all these criminals sometimes you see them as individuals that could be dealt with especially the ones that you have sort of established what they represent but in the long run you will realize that the coven the establishment in Nigeria that comprises every demography. When you, like I said, ethnic or religious or class or, uh, you know, creed, you, the establishment comprises that. So when you now realize that the establishment protects their own, it's like a, you know, it's like a, a swamp. And you know that in a swamp, you have all kinds of things in there. You've got reptiles, you've got, uh, I mean, like a swamp, a skanking swamp. Okay, that is what the establishment in Nigeria is. It is beyond just the politicians. You have your pastors, your bishops, your imams, your shades. Your obas, your obese, your sultan, your emirs. You've got your village head. You've got the market head. You've got community head. You've got different, different kind of these that have their own, the establishments as their representative in there. So it's a conglomeration of, uh, you know, all kind of uh, crawly character in a swamp. And if you really want to, for any reason, if you really want to drain that swamp and you do not have the resources to drain it, sometimes self-destruct button, which the 
overconfident establishment always keep us i mean they always keep that aside on their side and the self-destruct button is when they begin to destroy themselves internally and you build on that because they have to self-destruct the weakness because the strength of uh, the establishment comes from the reward that is uh, accruing from it to those limited crooked uh, people that cut across all this clan I've told you. Seriously, the reward is really, really good. Nobody gets punished per se. But if they can destroy themselves from within, and then you are enlightened enough educated enough never to reinforce them or re-empower them having known who they are and the damages they have actually caused then yeah we can take on the establishment and get rid of it yeah you can challenge the status quo and change it and that's why it is important to pay attention to all of this not to celebrate it not to laugh at it not to Feel like it's a win in any way it is not and the reason why they still get rewarded is because few of us are aware of the danger that these guys truly represent without putting our emotions into it just using the factor and figures and then you do not want to secretly let your emotion override the facts and then you reinforce the criminals who becomes even more powerful you get what I mean? Eh? So who else would tell us and then we will believe that El Rufaya is not just an incompetent uh, a criminal, okay? He was in fact a wasteful, uh, you know, fanatic, a wasteful criminal that plunged generations of uh, Kadu. What do you call yourself in Kaduna? Kaduna Itabi? Are they Kadunans? Anyway, it doesn't matter. If you are from Kaduna State, see, that's space, right? El Rufaya, like Bokwari did in the eight years of first their, uh, you know, a terror-infested uh, reg I mean, reg uh, regime, the future of uh, four, five generations, six, seven generations of uh, anybody born inside that Nigeria have been traded off, mortgaged by Bukwari's government. But for the people of Kaduna, the little finger, eh? Kaduna little finger has managed to plunge the future of uh, the young and the old in the abyss of indebtedness. Not the debt that Kaduna can pay, by the way. Part of the lies they told people was that uh, El Rufaya has att had attracted so much investment to Kaduna. Let me tell you this. They told the world that uh, the Kaduna's, uh, listen to this, so they said Kaduna's annual IGR before El Rufaya was 13 billion. And El Rufaya borrowed money to build some buildings and roads and all of that. And he has improved the IGR of Kaduna State to annually 63 billion naira. Okay. 63 billion era IGR. Well, that's not bad, but that's very bad. If you actually have sense, I tell you. Kaduna State relies on a federal allocation. And in a year, Kaduna makes, at least averagely, Kaduna makes around 10, I'm sorry, 100, between 100 and 150 billion naira a year from the federal allocation, including local government money. And El Rufaya that borrowed money to bring card fest, you know, Kaduna investment. Ah, they were doing a drama then. You know, where people were making bags, people making shoes. Eh? They will bring them and display them in a Kaduna fair under El Rufaya 
so that they can cook the figure, they can cook the book and tell you investors are just flocking to Kaduna, a terrorist state under a terror sympathizer, El Rufaya. There was no investor coming to any goddamn Kaduna. If they probably had a chance of going to Kaduna, it will be the Southern Kaduna terrorized by El Rufaya. I am not making this up. It was a dry run, but they were cooking the book until this guy came in and he said, El Rufaya lied to all of them. In fact, Kaduna is in debt. So they, they wanted to shut him, like shut him up, like, shut up your mouth. What about uh, he left you liability? What about assets? What about uh, assets? What about the IGR? And she renewed and they live for Kaduna. They see where the governor of Kaduna talks, say, want to tap with you, they don't sell their future. You wait there, Obama show. I be already blue quite to one eh. Clot simple ya no paja. You are saying what about asset? Asset is where they will. Asset that Kaduna is going to be using over seventy five percent of their own monthly allocation from Abuja to pay debts. The future president of Nigeria, eh? The jihadist eh, El Rufaya ran his state account. And for those uh, ones, like the contract he awarded, uh, you know, if you do want um, two, three kilometers of road, they will take the picture, they will gloss it, edit it to look so great, and tell you that was what he did in Abuja. Oh, he changed the face of Abuja. Well, he didn't forget eh, that uh, his family, including six-month-old boy, was going to be allocated uh, land, piece of land in Abuja, courtesy. His papa happened to be the federal capital territory minister. I feel you think we don't forget. Same thing played out in Abuja, I mean, uh, Kaduna. It was so bad that Baba, they now realize that some of uh, the properties of the Kaduna state government have been naturally sold as scraps by El Rufaya. But they would have covered all of that up. You wouldn't have heard anything if El Rufaya. Did not start the move. The move where his own supposed loyalist in Kaduna eh, are telling Sonny the governor that he will only do one time. He's not showing enough respect to the Malam. He will only do one time. He will never do second time. They know what they did though, to make him governor. He did not win. No. But anyway, he's now not loyal. So they always accuse him of not being lawyer. So the guy just broke the old box or the bottle and told the whole world that, let me tell you this, so $583 million loan. There nobody knows what El Rufaya used the $583 million for. Yes, I do not took the money. Okay. In fact, part of the money was uh, where the, um, uh, this one will be Joko. $583 million loan on, uh, taken by Kaduna. $350 million of that money was actually loan given to consultants. They gave $50 million loan to Kaduna so that Kaduna could pay consultants that would help and advise the Kaduna state government on how to invite and attract investors. $50 million. They paid $50 million loan. I do not borrow $50 million loan. And that money was paid to a consultant. And that consultant was to put together an idea of how to generate drinking water for the people of Kaduna. So the consultant that withdrew the map collected $50 million, borrowed money, $50 million. All of this were released and they were like, so where is the money they borrowed? The money was paid to people as consultant fee. Then Kaduna now owes over. 80, how much? 88 billion naira. Anyway, Shah, the Shah said, oh, well, I do not know they generate any 63 or 65 billion naira every year. The total revenue Kaduna is generating every month was put at, uh, this sunny guy who said, Kaduna is only generating between 1 billion and 1.5 billion naira. There is nothing like Kaduna, they generate, uh, uh, how much did they say they were generating again? I think they said Kaduna was generating five billion. That was what they said. 
but that's not true. It's a lie. Kaduna is broke, almost bankrupt. Then the guy can't go borrow, no go tell people of borrow, no that. If Numbu is paying subsidy secretly. And that is why the economy is in problem. If Numbu is using money from the foreign reserve eh, to defend the Naira, they have withdrawn over $2 billion in the last 29 days alone to defend the Naira. And that is why it is not reflecting. Naira is going down. Inflation is going up. Food prices are going up. So what is missing? Because it is voodoo economy. El Rufaya said that in, uh, he said that in Borono, in Maiduguri, uh, just two days ago. And boom. The Kaduna State Government, I mean, the Kaduna State uh, House of Assembly. They have now decided to probe El Rufaya's government and time, Jari. Because even the ongoing project in the state that El Rufaya said Sony should complete. Apart from the fact that El Rufaya has taken pictures on the partly completed, some of the partly completed their projects, but they are not completed. Eh? They said that alone is 115 projects that El Rufaya is owing. And when you put all of the money together, it is over 400 billion naira. These are people that El Rufaya signed an awarded contract of this contract of that, but didn't pay them. He expected his uh, successor to pay them, even when the debt of the state is already taking 75% of the allocation. So all of this they would have kept behind. Here you get if this El Rufaya has not started mingling with who they believe are opposition and is up to something. So the status of assembly now want to probe them. Eh? I know. That's what you see here. Um, is, uh, that's my brother. He's a Lloyd. It's a Lloyd. Be like, I make the El Rufaya's name sound like his name. I mean, what would you call him? Little finger or what is it? What's what is uh, his real name again, Seth? Oh, my, you are right, too. I only know that El Rufaya is El Rufaya. What is his Nasiru? Nasiru. Nasiru. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, we don't know. All of them I know say if they grab me, eh? it is going to be a long time away. So that is why I can use my freedom now to speak the way I want. You should do the same. Okay? Don't live in that mental, uh, sort of a mental bondage where you feel like, because people used to say that to me like, if they arrest you now, you are calling him Tifnumbu. Eh, eh? You see all of you, all this freedom of uh, speech that you have, eh? you are calling him Tifnumbu, you are calling him Bokwari, you are calling him Mumarisi. Eh? That's why I told people, people were like coming to me like, uh, if they arrest you now, they will say it's a uh, fundamental human right. For the, it's my right, shut up. This is my right to, to do what I'm doing. Okay. Why are you calling him Sonweku? You are calling him Bewiri uh, Daniel. I've got so many names. So, Ibi Kunle Oma Mushi, or Iro Kunle Oma Mushi, Arebe Mugu Baba Kabiru. Like all of that. So, some people were like, eh, can't you just call their normal name? Because if they now, if they now arrest you now, people will be saying, eh, this is or that. You are, you are spoiling their name. Say, Kinti, eh, Kile to Feni, Kile to Nika Tantori, like, do you really love me that much? Because I know you don't love me. There is no Agbadorian that will genuinely love me. Let's be honest. Here you get. Like if you see any uh, worried idiot, a Sai Barbarian, hmm? or a bad idiot, or a bad stud, 
that says, Oh my ego, I love you. I say, uh, come on, shut up. They don't like me, I don't like them. And we know they lie to ourselves. But once in a while, they come here to come and try and use emotion. Like say they care for me. You don't care for me. A lot of you actually wanted me gone. So I then told myself that before I am gone, I use my freedom properly. You speak my mind now. You know, they say, speak now or remain silent forever. Say, I will speak now. It has a freedom of speech, freedom of speech. I say, but do you know that your freedom after speech, uh, speech is not guaranteed? I said, we'll discuss that one when we get to that stage. But may I use the freedom of speech first? At least let me, let me use it first. Yeah. So I've got a lot of names for them. And that's why I said when they finally, if they finally have their way, like they do have their way with a lot of Nigerians who can't help themselves. Some of you didn't even say anything. You are a victim. Or you don't know that this economic hardship is a man-made hardship. It is not God. It is not because you are a sinner. It is not because you are not hardworking, even though. We can't find, we can't know because there's no work. I person we get work that they find out if it's hard working or it's not hard working. And that's why I don't like that label, lazy. Oh, my ego Nigerians are lazy, Jerry. They don't want to do anything. I, say, I don't really like that label per se. Because some of you will not even do what you want them to do. I know, I know, I know you're like helping them. I'm trying to help them. I'm only trying to help. Some of you won't do what you ask them to do. And if they actually have, have the same opportunity like you, do you know they won't do that job? Eh? Because now, now they take ideas, say, oh, now they. So I don't like that label. Okay? You so say, you're not hardworking. Where is the work? Do not rate if I'm hardworking or softworking. Whether I am hardworking or lazy. I'm just saying. Eh? You need to know that the economic hardship that you are facing in Nigeria or a threat of it is not because you are a sinner. It's not because you are not prayerful enough. It's not because you are, you are not closer to God enough. They are man-made. And they are called economic war in some better climb. Economic war, if an household can no longer take care of their own bills, that is economic war. And the people who wage economic war are two. Either the incompetence and corruption of those in government or some cartel taking advantage of that corruption. And then the result is going to be like there's no amount of uh, prayers or prayer points or whatever you are putting for. There's no amount of work. Eh? You see what they say? They say women always pray for hard working. Oh, Heavenly Father. I pray to you. I am looking for a very, very handsome, tall, dark, hard-working man. Very hard-working man to come and take care of me. But when they see people, where they dig conga. I say, ah, Eunice, I don't find husband, husband for you. Now conga, the guy, they drill you. They will say, I reject it in Jesus' name. God punish you. Now you go marry a person with a dick conga. I thought you wanted an hardworking man. Man, how do you actually make this work then? You get what I mean? It is not because you are not smart enough. The economy is rigged against you. And it is man-made. So if you do have anyone you want to go after, you will go after those who make that happen or those who allow that to happen. Because you see, I call it economic jihad because anything that is against the safety, the comfort of my family, myself and my family, a threat to their living standard, is a threat to my life. You see, anything that is a threat to the lives of my family that way is war. Whoever is behind us, whoever are those who are behind it, right? I will see them as my automatic enemies. I don't need any, anyone to explain that to me. So I can see where my problem is. And I can go after them. So, the future is sold. 
by the criminals who are they told themselves that they are they have the war chests for years to come. Any election, even their own children, children can never suffer. And they are guaranteed all of this by stealing the future of those who will be unfortunate not to come from their family. Abby, it's going to be like you're unfortunate not to come from the Arufaya's family. So use your freedom rightly. When you have the chance of living, you see, all of us are going to die. Now, I think a lot of people are beginning to have said, oh my God, oh my God, I'm having, a, I'm having a panic attack. Why? Why are you having a panic attack? Oh, you said we're all going to die. Of course, we're going to die. I, I just don't know when. Why are you having a panic attack because you hear that all of us are going to die? You at least try and live first. Live first. Be alive. Do not let your fear of what is going to happen to you if you decide to be a free-minded person. Somebody who speaks his mind and believes everything he sees right. So I, I encourage people to live first. And I remember when the member of this platform came and he said, Mayego, you said something the other day and you kept repeating that again and again and it is for us to be much aware of our environment. You need to be, you know, smart, being smart has to do with uh, understanding or learning how to read the room. You learn when to talk, you learn when to keep quiet, you learn when to just uh, observe or you learn when to present, I mean, to pretend to be absent-minded, kind of. The ability to read the room Observe your environment. Read very well your actions. Do not regret your actions or find out about what you are about to do only when you have done them. They are so helpful when it is time for you to judge characters who are part of the weapons fashioned against you. Anyone that is uh, anywhere contributing to the art heap that a lot of you and your families have been subjected to, whether you are supporting them or you are not supporting them, it doesn't really matter. You will be a victim of uh, an established uh, system which is more like a weapon fashioned against you. So what do you do when you go to your deliverance uh, service and it tells you so uh, read uh, some, I don't know, but it has something to do like, you know, no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. This and that star, right? And then you follow that up with some other kind of, uh, you know, sayings that gives you reassurance that uh, indeed, even if they fashioned any weapon against you, they will never succeed because you are fortified and you've got Jesus, right? These are those fashioned against you. And in part, from, the, from Kaduna to Owiri, eh? from eh, Abakaliki to Makodi, from Maiduguri eh? to Agodi in Badon, or Alagbaka in Akure to, eh, what do you call that your place in eh, Oshogo again? Hmm? The characters that are contributing their own uh, big, small quota into dipping us inside this perpetual uh, poverty, they are those who you should pay attention to. Why? Once uh, their own internal strides or internal uh, rancor, self-destruct button are pressed, you should never, for the life of you, eh? Give them back life by being the typical Nigerians. Who are the typical Nigerians? Typical Nigerians are those who will tell you they know all the problems of Nigeria. We all know all the problems. What's the solution? These are hypocrites, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of a deceivers who lives in denial. They will quickly ask you, I will know all of these things. What is the solution? On the one hand, then when you turn around and you say this, 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 this and da 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 like eh, 
they should be in jail facing crime against humanity, crime against their country, treason against their supposed country. They should be fired or jailed. And that is when you begin to see those asking you for solution. What is the solution? They say, no, 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 no. That's not a solution. That's not a solution. Shejima Kinde is still better. He's a preferred thief. He's, he's doing fine. My own thief is still better than these people thief. So if we want to kill all of the thieves in Nigeria, I think I prefer we keep my own thieves. Because my own thieves are God-fearing. My own thieves, eh, they are allergies. Eh? My own thieves are Dickens. Oh, my own thieves are Yorubas. So let us kill other thieves and leave Yorubas. My thieves are better than your thief. Is the reason why you do not try to tell solution to a typical Nigerian. He is a liar. Just like uh, the existence of that Nigeria too. A pure fabrication of lie. That lasted too longer than they all planned. Nigeria. What is the solution? It's not because they are interested, though. They are not interested in any solution. Because if the solution says, deal with the criminals who have brought this upon us and free ourselves from the shackles of this uh, mental slavery, no, don't do it that way. No, that's not the solution, Mayogu. Okay, what's the solution? I don't know. I just thought that's not the best solution, okay? Because listen, eh? I mean, let us be honest, this then grammar will start. Why that is not possible? Kill all those criminals. Take their, you know, you know, kill their political careers to the point that they do not have that kind of uh, power over you anymore. Jail them. Take everything they've taken from you. Mm, I think that is debatable. Because I know that, uh, oh, yeah, a typical Nigerian, they do not want that solution because they are waiting for their turn. Turn by turn, Nigeria Limited. When is it going to be your turn? Okay, maybe after my turn, we can talk about how to cleanse Nigeria. Oh, no, maybe after the turn of my son, my son hasn't been part of it. Maybe after my son, then you can talk about cleaning it. The greed and selfishness of individuals. That is why they told you, your criminal leaders, they are the true reflection of majority of you inside that contraption. And that's why they always have people to defend them. Imagine a victim of a, a misgoverned country telling you that you do not know what you are talking about. And you look there like, really? Are you sure? Because you are now talking about the criminals that he is associated with. They are his mentor. El Rufaya, Sonweku, Amoshi, Bewiri Danieli, even Mumadu Bokuari, it's a pandemic, Malamu, Nio, who else is there? Aregba Mugbo and Konyo. Let me tell you something. These guys, including Tifnumbu, the Jaga Wiri, the Jaga Banditi, the Jaga Addicti, Ashiwaju and Wuli, Ashiwaju and Wagbe, right? It's a role model to many, many wannabe callers. There are many, many wannabe callers. So what solution are you bringing to them that they should jail their mentors? No, they won't do that. That's far fetched. So Nigerians love their oppressors differently. But for the good, for the good of all, uh -huh. it is always very ideal to or continue to put this before all of us, okay? So that we can all know, say we know what we do. Nobody can claim ignorance. Oh, and I didn't know. Oh, I wish I knew, Sha. Shut up your mouth, you knew. You always knew. It's because your preference for your own typical Nigerian in you allow you to lie. Lie. Oh, yeah. Lie to me. That you did not know. Oh, I never knew that. Oh, I wish. How come we are just knowing this? Oh, really? Come on, put up the act. Oh, yeah. Let's pretend that we didn't know. That's why we have to do this. So that you can stop pretending that you did not know. That you are an enabler or somebody who pretended to be sitting on the fence and very quick to jump down from the bench once uh, and from the fence once uh, the one of your own uh, criminal mentor. 
Abina Menthor eh, is mentioned and they have to be sacrificed eh, for the cleansing of Nigeria. No, don't do that. Then you have an opinion. Then you are politically correct. Then begin, you begin to look for respect. Don't you have respect? Don't you have home training? Is that how you were raised? Well, this this show to us that this is how you were raised. I mean, I remember when people used to say that to me. They said, I don't pay respect. Don't you have home training? You cannot be talking to, to, to older people, people who are old enough to be your grandparents. Are you serious? So I like I lack home training for calling out a career criminals. Young and old. I mean, no okay, girl training for calling them out because I'm not respectfully calling them out. Hey, sir, sir, call you, sir. Hey, sir, please, sir, now. Hey, I will even start calling you, sir. Bori buffe, are you down on it? Because look at it this way. It goes both ways. In fact, I am a very good example of uh, a proper upbringing. Yeah, I am. Because I could have joined them. Because I don't know who raised these people. I don't know their parents. Listen to me. Nigerian criminals from the east to the north, from the middle belt to midwest, from Niger Delta eh, to the southwest. See, you all have all the criminals. You, we are all well represented in this criminal enterprise. Don't, don't deny that. Yeah? We are all represented in this criminal enterprise. And I have said this before. Even though we might be pointing out the marginalization here, marginalization there, the state uh, sponsored. Profiling of the egos, these are established facts. But two facts, two truths can coexist. The second truth is this there is no part of Nigeria that is not marginalized. No single part. The Shege eh, is well democratized. Now, all of our people make up a eh, the total number of the poverty capital of the world, which Bukwari made Nigeria. We are sharing all of this. We are all marginalized by the system that continues what to victimize our own uh, citizens. So you are not spared. Nobody is spared. And that is why when you look at those who are perpetrating this on us, have you ever asked yourselves, who are their parents? How were they raised? What kind of home training did they give to these your politicians? Eh? Did their parents raise them to be murderers? Eh? To be ritualistic? Drinking and bathing with human blood for power. To be kleptomaniacs, cold hearted criminals who will loot the public resources and watch the same public suffer in agony. Who raised them? Is that a proper home training? Would you say your politicians are given proper home training to do this to you? Did their parents raise them to do this to us? Is this a sign of good home training? No? So you should never in your life ever have anything to say to me and say I lack home training while I'm talking about born criminals that you are celebrating in Nigeria. They put the pictures of their parents up. Oh, my mother, Ashagia Ade, you raised me well. You did a lot for us. You suffered for us. When our papa died, you raised all 11 of us. They are praising their mother. And a lot of you are just like, oh, yeah, Tata Toby Mori. I want Yoshi to be Moli. I want Baba Wiri to be Moli. I want Dambo Ruba. Because that's exactly what it should be. Cliche. You don't look at me and say, I am. I have to respect those criminals. Joe Martini. 
and people stop saying that to me. I like them training. They don't say that to me anymore. They now said I am proud. Some said I am arrogant. It doesn't matter. For every action, there is an expected, you know, counter or opposite reaction. I cannot be talking about your role models, born criminals. Now you are not going to look for something to sell to me too. You lack home training. Thank you. Like your criminal leaders. Mine is fear. It's not hurting you. I am not hurting people. I am not hurting you. I am trying to put balm to soothe your pain and at the same time letting you understand where that pain is coming from. I am your friend. It doesn't matter if you see it that way or not. That is why you are watching this. So that a lot of you will know what you need to know. And if you want to lie to yourself, and all of us can begin to lie to us and pretend that we didn't know. And then you will know that all of us know what they do. It's either you are waiting for your turn, or you are a born awaiting criminal. There's no two way to it. Yeah? So the people of Kaduna would now have to wait for more revelations on how El Rufaya bankrupted Kaduna. So that to them, maybe this can help them to destroy his uh, political chance of upstaging Tifnumbu. It is always all about next election for this criminals never about the next generation and that is why from the bloomberg uh, report which has been working very very well on uh, the fine i mean on supposed the finance provided by the apc for some reason they were able to come out today and tell all of us that they were listening you know, deep numbers policies that we told you is working last month this was uh, in march uh nigeria naira was reported as the worst performing currency in the world well, rightly so and that was when they said they were doing the floating of the naira so after floating and everything went south nigeria naira Became a thousand naira to, I mean, a thousand nine hundred naira to a dollar. That was alarming. So, what did they do? Let us go and take some money from here and there and then subsidize the exchange rates. Okay. And let us hope uh, we could possibly, you know, turn the tide, you know, boom. The, the, the ship from eating the economic iceberg. And that's exactly what they did. I don't know how much they have spent. But Bloomberg just told us now that uh, Nigeria has withdrawn over $2.2 uh, $2 billion and $96 million from the Nigerian Foreign Reserve to defend the Naira. And this, according to Bloomberg, is actually a massive withdrawal that has never happened to the Nigerian foreign, I mean, foreign reserve in the last four years. The last four years, according to them, Nigeria has never withdrawn money from their forex like that. And according to the IMF, they said that Nigeria has about $32 billion before now, according to them as well, they said Nigeria had $34 billion. From that $34 billion in Nigeria's foreign reserve, Boko Haris government already took a loan with Morgan Chase of America and then Goldman Sachs of America. Nobody knows what they did with the money, but they took about $7.5 billion. Oh dear. It was actually about $18 billion. But the way they worked it, they issued a treasury bond, which eventually, when it matures after five years, JP Morgan, Morgan Chase, right? Goldman Sachs, 
they can come and take that uh, part of the money. But there is a particular one which was actually like cash. Cash. JP Morgan gave uh, Emi Fioli of Nigeria, gave Nigeria Central Bank $500 million. That's JP Morgan. Goldman Sachs gave $7 billion to Nigeria. Yeah. And it was given to the Central Bank of Nigeria. And the collateral they used was the Nigerian Foreign Reserve at the time. If we don't pay you this money, go and take our foreign reserve. No worry. So IMF now said, you know, with all these uh, I mean, existing commitments, Nigeria still have control over their money. And if nothing is done, genuinely done, economically in Nigeria, their money will be gone soon. And even the value of that $32 billion can only help Nigeria five imports. I mean, sorry, six months import. You know, your money there is actually like your own uh, sort of a credit rating, sort of, right? So if Nigeria need to import uh, things, that's for the next six months, that's how long the foreign uh, reserve can cover. After that, Nigeria ceases to exist if nothing is done. And from that money is what uh, Tifnumbu and uh, Kadobi, they have taken out $2 billion and $98 million. <sighs> to defend the Naira so that you can read it in the newspaper tomorrow. The Nigerian Naira is now 1,000 Naira to a dollar. Of that, the dollars they were given out to their BDC and the rest of them generally is not reflecting. The importation and every other thing that Nigeria still depends on, which El Rufaya also told us Nigeria has been paying subsidy. We don't know how much subsidy they have paid to, so, to Dangote as we speak. But he has agreed to help them sell cheap diesel. So even at that, once they sell some millions of liters of I mean, cheap diesel, that too will kind of make it look like things are going to get cheaper since all this, you know what I mean? It is all scheme. It's all scam. It is all an attempt that to cover up some other shady, dirty things they are doing secretly that will always have the economic impact sooner or later. They know what they are doing. You should know what they are doing too. And I just told you one of them. And you have to have an idea what that simply means. It simply means that they will continue to cover up and patch up and patch up until they can't patch up anymore. And Bloomberg said, if they continue this, Una will draw to over $2 billion, dollars or non naira in 29 days. See. How many days do I know? Don't come. How many days are in? How many days do you have in a year? Coming up. 30 days of September. April, June, and November, all the rest are 31, except in February alone, which has 28 years, 28 days, and 29 days on each leap year, 365 days next. Yes. 365 days in a year. 365 days, and in 29 days of trying to bring. Nigeria Naira down to what you are seeing now. Artificially, Nigeria spent $2 billion. Oh, yeah, do the math. Do the math. How much do you think is going to take them to keep it at that or reduce it further for the rest of the year? But actually, currency gains value when production increases and the demand for it also increases that is how currencies gain value not through speculation and cover up abracadabra buy back all of this even if they were tried i have economics i mean economists on this platform tell me if i am lying okay because one thing i kind of uh, love about my life is that I am not somebody who knows everything. But Baba, I do do my best to know something. 
about everything. That's not an attempt to say you know everything. No, 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 don't try to know everything. Nobody can know everything. And yeah, be. So I don't want to say that as a matter of fact. Can somebody know everything? No, no, I don't think so. Anyway, my brain or the average human brain can know everything. But here is the trick. Try to know something about everything that you come across. So important. So that at least you have an idea and you can dig in from that your little idea. It does help. It was for me. In this, uh, in this case, so we'll continue. And that is, the Nigerian uh, government, according to people who, have, who I have researched, though, they said that idea is not bad. Though. If your economy wants to begin to act funny, there are some measures, okay, that you have to put in place. And those measures, right? They are temporary or else you are going to run your country aground. For example, eh? The cost of living, and you know you can really help. Right? Then you can subsidize food supply. You can subsidize all over the world. In the UK here, yeah, they, they subsidize our food. Uh -huh. In the UK here, yeah, then they subsidize our petrol and all of that. But nobody's seen that all the time. But they have a way of subsidizing them for us. Some of them, they subsidize them from the source by reducing the tariff those people pay, especially if they have to bring those things into the UK. So the UK government will reduce this tariff so that the amount of money they, we will pay will not be like, oh, because traders don't really care. They can always put the cost on you, the consumers, right? And you, the consumers, are the citizens who are going to scream and say, what is the government doing? What is the government doing to help us? We are starving. We are hungry. So those measures are called subsidy. And they do help. There are those ones that you have to do temporarily. There are some you have to do like mid -term, medium term, which means you can be like, you have to do them for like a straight six months or sometimes a year. There are long term one, which is like permanent one. So once you, once you get a temporary one on going, you're already working on the medium one. Once the medium one is in place to take care of it, you would stop the, a temporary one straight away so you begin to save then why the medium one is in effect right you can say okay this medium one this medium process is going to last for two years okay so before it matures right your longer plan is already in or it's already in play you get up now so with that you can actually bring your country back from the brink of economic collapse but if nobody didn't do that in fact, right before your very eyes, they were spraying themselves money. They were splashing the money about. They were like, I'm talking about uh, billions of dollars, so trillions of naira. They were sharing it around and the money was gone for a country that has none. Are you with me? So they did, didn't really care. And when they now felt like the whole ceiling was collapsing, crashing down, they now withdrawn their own policy secretly. The one they did, I mean, the, the, the policy they announced with so much uh, fanfare, they had to secretly withdraw it. And when they withdrawn back and, you know, back to their scheming, old, crooked way, hoping that you won't notice and you won't feel it. And that is why the dollar is reducing. The what you have in the, in the old communities or in the old country right now, is that uh, oh a bag of rice has come down to fifty four thousand? Where where where? My neighbor just bought two now. Where is your neighbor? Tell us where. Where did you buy it? Abe Okuta. Where in Abe Okuta? Ah, I cannot release the info now. Ah, I cannot release it online. No, you do not know that uh, the Abubu sellers have been unleashed on you to start telling you news like this to make you feel like okay. They said this is, but meanwhile the real figure shows that the inflation has gone up. Because it's true. The Naira dollar that is they told you coming down is uh, artificial. 
It is not organic. It is not the economy reacting. Nothing has happened in your economy that you can say. Your national grid continue to collapse. Dakudaji. What exactly would you say they have done physically that you can say as sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, transcend or transformed into some level of uh, power and strength behind the Naira? Nothing other than they were taking money to defend the Naira by giving dollars to people who need the dollar and selling it to them how much they want to sell it to them. Not the dollar made from production in the country, money from your foreign reserve, money saved there before they came in. They are taking it to defend this so that it can look good to you. Now you have to start asking everybody, where did they sell rice for 50,000? Where did you buy your own Indomie for 11,000? They said Indomie has come down. They said Kiniko Kiniko has come down, but not in my own area. How come? Oh, it must be the, be the traders. These are our people. They are the heartless people. Our people are very, very heartless. Eh? Dollar is coming down now. When dollar was going up, they, keep, they kept increasing and increasing and increasing. Dollar is coming down now. They are not reducing it because a lot of people will see somebody do that, say that online. You do not know. They are the propagandists that will make you feel so stupid, confused, and then they help you point fingers. Who to blame why the price of food is not coming down? Not because of those who are performing the voodoo economy. Not them. A lot of you need a lot to know about that, okay? I have actually been uh, uh, talking for the past uh, 75 minutes. That's quite a number. Let's take it a bit further where I can take a bit of break in between. After El Rufaya's days, listen to what uh, uh, your supposed the finance minister had to say. He is lying, you know, but this is how they talk. And this is how they tell people what they wanted to hear. And if you disagree, that means you didn't wish Nigeria well. You don't wish Nigeria well. You only always love bad news. Why do you always love bad news about Nigeria? Instead of us to be happy. Instead of us to be happy that uh, Nigeria Naira is coming down. But if it is bad news, uh, they are talking to you. That is why this guy still has a job as a minister of the World Bank, IMF Group, and of course it's a of the international uh, um, elite, the international financial elite. We have the multilateral development institutions, World Bank, IMF, but also the bilaterals, the UK, the US, uh, Germany, Europe. We have uh, um, all those around the table discussing issues of um, together with, of course, the de developing countries. And, and on the agenda is development is uh, um, climate change, how to extreme end extreme poverty, and of course, how to garner the resources internationally um, in order to uh, achieve those goals. But secondly, and perhaps most importantly, the economic team of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is here to showcase the progress so far of his bold, courageous, and strategic reforms of the Nigerian economy in order to get it uh, stabilized and uh, get investment in to get it growing again. Mm. So, of course, we are here to uh, emphasize what has been done so far. We've all seen what has happened in terms of stabilizing the exchange rate. And inflation, though it's still ticking up, is headed in the right direction. If you look closely at the numbers uh, that came out yesterday, you'll see that there is a slowing of the, of the rate of increase of uh, food inflation. So things are moving in the right direction. Government revenues are up, even oil revenues are up, though not as much as we would like. So we're here really to present uh, um, what the president has done so far and uh, give an indication of, of what is to come. And I think also to give a, a sense of uh, the, the optimism that is really uh, the mood in Nigeria right now. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, um, uh, obviously, the, 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 the administration of uh, President Balatini has been receiving a lot of accolades from IMF and World Bank, as you have noted, in the direction. But what's next as you go there? Uh, you, you go there to present, okay, some of the fruits of the reforms. Of course, we are still expecting more as Nigerians. We still need a whole lot more. But what's next? What do you hope to, go, to come back home with as you uh, begin Certainly conversations? That, thank you. Certainly. 
Um, what is next is what matters most, and there's still a long way to go. We have seen some uh, sign, good signs of recovery, good signs that we're going in the right direction, but there is much more is needed before we uh, get to at, uh, achieving the real goal of Mr. President, which is growing the economy and uh, reducing poverty. And for that, we need resources. We're here to sit around the table with financiers, multilaterals that have uh, 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 cheap uh, uh, financing, grant financing, even bilaterals, as well as uh, to encourage investors. The important thing about these conversations here is that the world is watching and a lot of investors, they take their cue from the kind of uh, reactions and uh, statements that come out from these types of gatherings. So as you've noticed, there have been very, very positive statements made about the progress uh, uh, um, that has been made given the uh, uh, types of uh, policies that have been implemented so far to come and invest in Nigeria. And we always emphasize the interest is in domestic investment, domestic Nigerians investing in the Nigerian economy, as well as, of course, foreigners who want to invest and add value are welcome. Mm. So uh, you also speak for Africa, uh, Minister, because... Uh, in the last uh, IMF World Bank meeting, you were made heading the um, African ministers, finance ministers. So what is the agenda? New Zans, Lili. New Zans, Lili. You know why he's smiling, Zobo Zobo? <clears throat> now, my people, they smile like that, okay? When they tell you that I already be Zobo Zobo. <laughs> like that. Uh, what is his name again? I, I forgot his name. It doesn't matter. Anyway, your minister. Uh, they are so happy to be taking economic advice from World Bank and IMF despite the horrible, horrible experiences of Africans and African countries in the end of these two global organizations in helping the criminal government across africa to further impoverish their own citizens putting them in perpetuity of indebtedness poverty come on a lot of people were advising these african uh, criminal leaders stop taking economic advice from imf and world bank the idea of Africans to go and devalue their money for peanuts called loans when their resources are, are given to them in exchange for these paltry sums called loans with FTFT horrible conditions that will put generations into perpetual poverty. But if Numbu has no legitimacy, there is no real investor who wants to sit down with a drug dealer. And a Boko Haram sympathizer, because you remember the terrorists that bombed Madala on the Christmas Day, Christmas Day bombing of 2010, I remember, I think. Kabiru Shokoto, when he was declared wanted for escaping from the police custody, guess where he was? Inside the government house, governor's lodge. Or no state governor's lodge in Abuja. And who was the governor at the time? The man that organized the kidnapping of her school children, Chibok girls. And he is your current uh, pres uh, vice president. And if Kalu dies, he will become your president. Who is going to take their real money to such places? To such place? Why would I want to take my legit money to a place where it's actually like criminals then? I can't loan them money. If it's going to bring me a very good return, especially if they don't care to pay me that much. And that is why the only people who are interested in coming to do anything with Nigeria are those who are coming to borrow you money. And on that front, I mean, that front, I mean, he's done very well for himself. He have managed to convince uh, some people in America and around the world to give them $7 billion. 
and they have issued them treasury bond, uh, treasury bond. Are you federal bond? That will pay you the money back in a year time with 18% interest. All over the world, even the United States of America, the one they believe is more, if you buy the United States of America's bond, <laughs> They believe it's one of uh, the prof most prof profitable. <coughs> Excuse me. That is, they are the most profitable and they give you the interest of a 4%. 4%. Nigeria is promising those who give them just uh, free hot cash. But the money is gone. They, they've spent the money. So maybe they will just have to go into the Nigerian foreign reserve when those people come back for their money. Where they are uh, expecting 18% uh, of their investment. So this money wasn't invested in anything in Nigeria. They used it to defend the Naira. They gave the money to themselves. And then, yeah, I was talking about uh, the, some steps you have to kind of make to show that uh, whatever economic problems that Nigeria is facing, right? There are temporary measure, medium measure, and a long-term measure, mid-term, Long term, short term, mid term, long time measure. Security, there's nothing that will happen to Nigeria Naira genuinely except all this artificial stuff, right? There is nothing, huh? Nothing to happen to Nigeria Naira as long as uh, the terrorism, terrorism industry in Nigeria is still flourishing. Taliban is getting some security money for bandits. So you go on TikTok, you will see a lot of bandits. They are living the normal life like some of you, even better one, compared to what they are flexing with. Can you flex with the uh, supposed your victim like these guys? Only in Nigeria. Now, we now hear that uh, some of the expatriates in Nigeria, when well, you call them expatriates, okay, Lebanese uh, and the rest of them, right? Like that, working or operating in Nigeria, as they were usually paying money to... Uh, the Nigerian police to give them special protection and all that. Well, the bandits, as officially as a uh, representative of the terror in Nigeria, they are collecting their own uh, supposed protection money or else. Or my kidnap who expatriates in you. Take a look at this one. <laughs> That is very real. Okay? If the man doesn't pay us security money, we'll just take him away. That's what they're saying. And that is Nigeria. The rest of the world is saying that. There is no way <clears throat> you can tell the world that Nigeria or Tifnumbu's reform is working in the face of insecurity. Insecurity that has already enveloped. And I mean, Nigeria has places in northern Nigeria where they call ungoverned areas. Ungoverned. That means government is no longer there and they will never be there. They've considered the entire place to to the bandits, as they call them, but they are terrorists. But if Numbu's policies are working, right? <clears throat> On the other side, I picked this up yesterday and they said it is the confession of uh, uh, the uh, Yoruba nation agitators that invaded the your status of assembly. Now, this is actually interesting, okay? It is in Yoruba, and I need somebody to help me Sort of do your best, okay? Type it in the comment section, the little uh, interpretation you can give to it, okay? Baba, this is what they told them would happen when they declared Democratic Republic of uh, the Yorubas dry. They are dry. Eh? This is what their supposed uh, president told them. Of me, pay this is not an opolo. 
and I will believe you. Tell me this is not a mental problem. Okay? And I will believe you. Until then, take a look at this. Okay. So one has been the United Nations. So when you do from the brand on, so I want to process it. I want to see the more. Ah, there is a way. Only WhatsApp let me share meeting. You go to the Google. Okay, so you bring you go let me share meeting. Go. Ah, anyway, let me share. I'm not going to share. Okay. But let's work by Google and hotel. So you know what I want to do. I'm going to do the new one. Ma <laughs> When I got to the pay, when she went to the pay, which was near under the camera, one day, who are under the phone, she ran under the phone. So you got to do somebody to do a little bit only loving salon. Got us of money, pay, but some of our schools in the day, one day. So no, me got to Molishi. Oh, I shine more name of a look back for me, Air Force. So let's log back. Kikoma, kima science. See, I want important information and to need me. So more after how many? I pay eighty money. Let's see. Let me pay. Ah, see, see, you go buy nation. Wah, so they pay. In con, con pay she for 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 she purpose me. So me let's see. Fine, let me get done. So hello. Well, promise you, I'll let you know. Don't pass on you. You pay. I need to buy some joy. You pay. Oh, entire. Kile family. You pay. Oh, you need to see. You need to go home. Ah, it's a fair. It's a illegal. You don't go to work. You go home. Ah, provide for everybody at the end of the day. Mwalimu <laughs> Omo mi nae wa nbi igba ta nbo wa won so pe won ti declare eh Yoruba nation pe o wa lori set nla emi ko pelu omo yen la jo ya be pe ngbo ngba ta tu bere gan lowo olopa lati bere pe won ngbo nbo ni won ti se declaration Yoruba nation Uti mari na ni ko olopa yen kan ro fa handu mi pe ki mo gbe mi ni mo uti mo se ni aso mi ti mo wo n be ninu eh wardrobe awon olopa ni iyagaku ni adugbo ti awa won mu awon iwe pelede pelede ka wa won so pe won eh yoruba le se ti ma waye nbe ni won ti fun wa ni emi gangan ni won fun ki so mo mo de ko lo le pe won ni egbe yoruba ti ni nation ba yi o pe koda airije airimu yo lo le o won ti won ko le mi lowo ni o agbo pe won se nkan yen ni secretariat lo gbo yen igba ta wa wa kuro ni ibi ta lo Eru o kan ti emi eru o kan ti mi ni pe ka fe se kan ya be ngba ta si ya na olopa gbe ni mo lo bere lowo e pe ngbo ni won ti let me help you so the story there for those interviewed the first two that young man and that young lady 
they came from Ibuora in the same of your state. Ibuora, like going on to that uh, Lalate, uh, you know, Ibuho, and all those areas. And according to them, they do not really know themselves. But they were told to assemble in Ibadan because they were going to declare Yoruba nation. So when they got to Ibadan, they were taken to a place where they were given bulletproof vest, uh, you know, gun and all of those things they were caught with. So when they entered the government house, he said they started hearing gunshots. But the gunshot was, so, was too much that they told them not to run, that it is under the law, that if they don't shoot back, the army will shoot them or the police will shoot them, that there are cameras. But the, the gunshot was so much that he had to run. That was when they caught him in the bush. And he was shot in the leg. The lady said, she's a, she finished her secondary school. She has no job, anything doing. And when they approached her, they said, they are about to declare Yoruba national that all this poverty will soon be over. They will give money to people and all of that kind of, right? And she was planning to go and join Air Force. She went to pick, to pick up the form to join the Air Force, Nigeria Air Force. But she was told that instead of joining the Nigeria Air Force, why don't you join the Yoruba Air Force? The moment the you know, the declaration is made, all this problem will be over. And according to her too, uh, they were taken to a place when they arrived in Ibadan. She's not living, she doesn't live in Ibadan. So they took her to a place and they gave them all these things they put on. Because they believed that Yoruba nation has been declared. And they were only just there to carry out an order of uh, the new government. The old man, well, according to him, that is not the first time, okay? Because according to him, right, he seemed to have uh, come or had an encounter with uh, uh, the people who were sharing flyers about uh, the declaration of Yoruba nation. Also, the two I mean, the two uh, people who spoke earlier, they said, because Yoruba Nation has been declared since November 2022, and this one is just pro, uh, reclamation or something, I don't know, something like that. Like, they just went there to go and effect the, the new nation. And they were told that nothing is going to happen to them. So the old man said, he just went out to buy food even though he's lying, okay? And this is why this is how I know he's lying. Initially, he said he was just going out to buy food with his son. And then he heard that uh, they are declaring Yoruba nation at the secretariat. So he decided to come and check if that is true. So the first person he approached was a police officer. He didn't know. And he was asking them, is it true that uh, the Yoruba nation is being declared today? And he was arrested. Meanwhile, in his own statement, he said he's met with them probably a day or so before that they gave him flyer that he took home to show to his uh, son and show to his family that they said that uh, all of our suffering, all of this poverty will be over just now that they have declared Yoruba nation. That uh, he didn't know it was all like, you know, and I will continue to ask you, how could anybody think this was actually right if you think you are not mad? How? 
I'll leave it at that. In uh, Okwama, we have now been told uh, categorically, in fact, factually, that the Okwama people did not kill those uh, 17 Nigerian soldiers. Those 17 Nigerian soldiers were not there on the order of their own superior. They were bunkers doing bunkering, working for Pompolo. And the reason why the military want to kind of cover it up, after the massacre and the killings of people, eh? well, it's not just the, the military that are trying to cover it up. Even the civilian governors too. In their effort, after killing over 100 people in Okwama, accusing them of killing soldiers, they went on to other communities, including in Bayelsa. And according to them, they were looking for the ringleader of uh, a militant group. We didn't know that before they told us the Okwama people killed those soldiers. Until tomorrow, their news media continued to say, Okwama people killed those soldiers. Even when there are no weapons or anything, how could they? But it was a fight between the two. One is a cartel uh, that has now been legitimized by the uh, criminal establishment and government of Nigeria, Tompolo. And there is this another guy who is also into bunkery, using the Okwama waterway as his own base. So they would do, uh, I mean, they said that. Uh, Tompolo, despite all of his weapons, the weapons Nigeria allowed him to buy for the protection of uh, Nigeria pipe, uh, sorry, pipelines. I mean, Tompolo's uh, group have arrested the vessel on the IC before by showing to all of us that they've arrested the, the vessels who are stealing crude oil in Niger Delta. Anyway, that's exactly what they do. But it's not stealing when they take the oil and they do not want any rivalry. Not wanting rivalry is the reason why what happened in Okwama happened. Those soldiers were not even killed in Okwama. Those soldiers were taken by this. I mean, listen to this. They said, despite Tumpulu's uh, weaponry, this guy is not a, a small fry. He gave uh, Tumpulu a run for his own money. So Tumpulu now resorted into using the, his connection his power, his influence in the Nigerian corrupt uh, military. So the soldiers were on hand to come and carry out a criminal act of using the military to suppress your rival in an illegal, heady, oil stealing business. So Kwama people were just to be the the ones they want to uh, possibly use as the soft targets. It went well for a while. I don't think it's going to go on uh, forever, but it is Nigeria. It is a crime scene. Maybe it will. Here, I won't go check uh, the name of, uh, of, of the guy. Um, I'm coming out. There is a name. So I'm going to go look for the name for the sake of uh, this uh, video. All right. So according to this uh, Journalist investigation. Mm? There is, listen to this word, Tompolo is known as a Ekomu Polo government. That's Tompolo. But you see this other guy that has been showing Tompolo. He's not showing Tompolo any shege. He's stealing the crude oil, doing bunkery. Tompolo is stealing the crude oil, doing bunkery. But he is with the government, collecting four billion era security money every month. From the Nigerian government, was still in, is is still there, stealing crude oil. So this guy is called Amang Bain. Yeah, that's his name, Amang Bain. Amang Bain. I don't know. So this Amang Bain guy is not connected to the Nigerian government. So therefore, Tompolo called the military to help him and make it look like official. Kill the guy and stop him from being my rival. When the 17 military personnel went there, a lieutenant colonel, two majors, and others about to smoke them like suya. I told you, those guys, they, 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 they are not nobody's hero. They are criminals. I'm so sorry if you are their family, okay? That's the truth. Oh. They, they won't tell you what 
or how your family members died, they were killed by the oil bunker that is a rival to the person who was paying them money. That is why a lieutenant colonel with that title, you go enter and use uh, Tompolo's boats, not even Nigerian boats, because if they have to use Nigerian gun boats, the Nigerian Navy boats, they would have to sign that the boats were released and they were dispatched to Okwama. So the Nigerian military didn't go with Nigerian boats. They went with Tompolo's boats. And it didn't take time before they smoked. And you could tell, those who killed them, they first disarmed them, took them into a, a, a place, and tortured them, okay? Like they killed them like ordinary people, nobody soldiers. They tortured them, they now beheaded them. They buried their heads elsewhere. They buried their bodies elsewhere. Okwama people didn't do that. But Okwama people have been killed by the Nigerian army as a cover-up. Listen to the governor of Bayelsa states. Diri, sending warning to the people, the community, where the suspected militant leader, Amang Bey, was traced to when the Nigerian army said their investigation now cut across uh, about three states. They are hiding something from you. And for this guy, is helping them to ensure that it will never see the light of the day. See the one he gave to the community that lost about 70 people to the Nigerian soldiers because of what they said happened in Okwama. Diri? They must stay at home to lead the people. And any traditional ruler that is not found at his place, I will promptly remove that traditional ruler. And for me, and my advice to the military, is that they must painstakingly investigate. Nuisance, Lily. Absolute nuisance. Well, it is Nigeria. Seems sweating. Oh, I'm doing my work to solve the problem. See how I'm sweating. Any royal father, any traditional ruler who does not stay at home will remove you. But that's it. Just pretty much like uh, people are at the mercy of their killers. Or oh, you should know. Okwama people did not kill those soldiers. They did not have what it takes to face Nigerian soldiers and slaughter 17 of them without any of them dying in the process. Impossible. And they know it. They do. And you do too. You do. You know now. And I just uh, like they say, may Nigeria not happen to me. I pray that prayer to my own friends and enemies alike. May Nigeria not happen to you. If you have seen Nigeria happen to people, even if you don't like them, sometimes you don't wish that to happen to them. You don't. People so confused that to even ask a question is an abomination. Yeah, don't ask questions. Shut up. They know what they are doing, so shut up. The other day they told us that... Uh, the reason why Nigeria gave money to Dangote for his refinery is because Nigeria cannot build refinery. But Dangote could. Then they changed the story. And they, well, before they changed the story, they said, well, Dangote is now going to refine. I mean, going to be, what's going to be refining the Nigerian crude oil? Great. Easy peasy. Just pump them from the Niger Delta. And they will land inside the, the Dangote refinery in Lagos. I mean, kind of easy. Easy peasy. No, it's not. It's all scam. Then they came back again and said, listen, no, 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 that's not what's going to happen. In fact, right now, the Nigerian crude oil has been sold for the next 25 years. So Dangote will need to go to Texas to buy crude oil. Texas is what you know. Texas is not too far. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's a standard. What standard is that? I don't understand, though. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's a standard practice. Is it no, no, man, no, man, no, no, all those grammars they will tell, say to you now. Those ones they want to sound so intelligent. You know, it's so much. It's a con. I say, Ko she done. Me ko impossible. When you're done lying, eh? We will start telling the truth. Or should I put it this way? If you don't stop lying, we will never stop telling the truth. The same way get refinery, we go to refine a crude oil. As a lot of stuff that comes out of crude oil, but suddenly it can only sell diesel. Are you mad? Refinery that got over one million barrel of crude oil is now going to be selling diesel. What happened to the remaining products? Waste. Anyway. This afternoon, they now said that uh, apart from what you know, air fire, the alert, uh, or yeah, the alert that air fire raised, uh, that Tifnubu has been paying subsidy even far more than uh, what uh, Bokwari was paying. It's not new, it's not news, uh, in any way. We just don't know how much of this money is being given to Dangote to help them sell the diesel less or anything. We could make your life a little bit less, less. Like rancorous and problematic. I am support, I mean support of it. Some of you think I want to kind of relish. I relish your your sadness, your hard time. And no, no, I don't. I don't relish that. I do not. In reality, I actually consider the fact that if we speak here, listen to this. So if we say something here, expose something here, it is not us celebrating it. If you have a listening government or listening people. The ideal thing is to get those things fixed. And you should be thanking me. Thank people like us that continue to tell them this is not normal. Even when majority of you are too tongue-tied, cowardized, and hypocrites to even say it out. We say them. They hear us. You praise them. Listen to this one. Oh. Uh, subsidy was gone. Hey, very good policy. Yes, it's good. It's a great policy. Subsidy is back. Hey, very, very lovely president. He has a very good listening here. He listened to people and now he has put it back. What else is there again that you can say? Part of the things that, okay, yeah. We are floating the Naira so that Naira can find its value. Oh, very, very great, bold move. Nigeria Naira, this is a policy that is long overdue. Nigeria Naira may first go up, it will come down, it's shaking the cock in the Breaking news. We have stopped the floating of the Naira. We are no longer floating the Naira anymore. Oh, very great news. That means this government is listening to people. Now you suppose just find out which of them are you listening to so that we can have an idea. Because listen to me, it is curable. Simply translated as uh, if you can tell us the color of your problem, we may find the right colorful pill or medicine to fix it for you. Hypocrisy will take you nowhere other than Dalala land, you know Dalala land, where you always think. Wishes were horses and beggars like you love to ride. Wishes don't rule a country, actions does. And we know a lot of you are so dumb enough, and you'll be sounding intelligent only for you to defend the rubbish. Now, then you kind of come back again and say, Okay, yeah, this guy said they didn't, they made mistake with that rubbish. You say, Yeah, I, I thought as much. I thought as much. Very, very good of you to know that. I didn't see that before. Oh, this government is working, listening to people. Oh, they low, yeah, we really. No? Anyway, let's let's kind of take it further. Oh no, one hour 53 minutes. I want to take calls tonight. 
I think if I continue, I'm going to overshoot it and then uh, I won't take calls. I want to talk about Kano. I want to talk about Gandola. A few other things to talk about. I'll just keep it that way. Right? Let's take calls. Thank you so much, by the way, for your time with me this evening. And I am going to make it a brief, brief uh, break. If you want to call in, the number is right there on your screen. I will be back in uh, two minutes. Hello Nigerians, this is just the beginning. Hello Nigerians, this is just the beginning. Speaking tongue. I do have a color of fully. Hello there. Hello, my Baba. BJ from London, Baba. Say that again from London. Who? BJ it from London. BJ. Baba, how are you doing tonight? Yeah. I'm good, Baba. Grant. Thank you for everything. Thanks a lot. Really Thank appreciate you. Baba. And our family. Everyone is yeah, good. Thank God. How is yours? Yeah. Oh, thank God. Great. Um, Baba Maregun, um, I, I want to contribute um, about the um, this Yoruba nation. That's what I want to keep in tonight. Please, sir. Go. I don't even I don't even know where to start from or what to say. And um, I hope Nigerian government have declared that unity wanted. They have to declare wanted because Sunday Bowo did not did not do up to this, and they went to his house to to invade his house. Do you actually know that there is a guy called Said Omobata? He's also part of this Yoruba struggle in the Gowo side and um, in the Tabakito side, and he later switched to Onitiri side because of money. And I heard he was the chief of staff. I didn't know, I didn't know if you see that video. I haven't. Sorry, though, like that. Ogbogunje. poisoned. Yeah. What I I swear, Okuni, Ogogunje, Otua, O Angare, Yang himself. Yes, because of the, you know, it seems he, he, he was scared maybe they would, you know, they would actually go for him. So he ran to Ghana. He ran to Ghana. And yesterday he did a video. Just, you know, when you finish, just check online, like Sayyid Omopata. The, the video is all over in, uh, social media now. Wow. He is dead. You know, we are, we are even thinking maybe he was faking his death and um, people, you know, we actually did some research, you know, 
in Ghana. They said he's dead, that he's in the mortuary, you know, that the Ghana police are trying to get his family to come and claim him, and yeah. Just because, and they said he's the chief, chief of staff of police theory. Exactly. So this this issue is not is not is not a old our legal it's not a small issue. They have to like declare the woman because I don't even know what is going on anymore because it's like they want to and I, and I saw Bode judge Baba. But they judge it he was he, he has in he's already pounding on what happened. They've turned into politics, you know, trying to, you know, secessionists for I mean Abati and Bode judge, they were you no know, like I was like, yeah. I heard him later ah, the day uh, where he was talking about it, and he was like, ah, he was surprised that Baba, could actually... They, as in, as in, he's like, I don't even... It's like they will, they will, they will adjust this struggle now, as in, and they, they will just... They, they don't want to see anybody talking about your urban nation in, in Nigeria anymore, because I have yesterday that Ondo, Ondo State Governor have declared that anybody that is talking about your urban nation should be, should be shot aside. I don't know if it's true, but this is what I had yesterday. Is that not what we're, yeah, is that not what I was saying for the past two days that uh, this is what this is going to lead to? Exactly. They, were, they are looking for means to criminalize it, so, and you so, just gave it to them. <laughs> so how do you want people like us who genuinely are actually, they genuinely wanted uh, the conversation around the Yoruba sovereignty to be uh, I mean, clear, we, right? we need to, like, know yeah. what to, to, to do. This is not because, like, we, we, it's not possible because they need to declare this woman wanted. And because, to be true, so the, the, um, the TV station in Nigeria, radio station, are already talking about, like, oh, we need to have all like this and that. And they were saying that one day go on, and Baba Kiko, yeah, are not part of it. You well, know. They came out but and told them like to declare they... wanted because they knew that she was going to be a trouble and they just never saw this. Yoruba Nation. Uh, one of our one of spoke uh, man is in, is in Turkey, the one they call it Gile. That one's just a guy, man, in Turkey, you, you know, online. Uh, you know, you know what they I do? I finished my program last night, right? So I was trying to yeah. uh, check on a few things on my channel. Then I decided to go on to exactly. YouTube. And I came across that guy. Baba, when you all are deluded, you got me more. I don't go on, like you said, Baba. I don't know what this is. Oh. Like women. Baba, eh, eh, mon koto, this, eh, mon koto, shelemi. Exactly, eh, mon koto, shelemi. Sherry, Sherry, I want you to talk to you. 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 To small abroad, one place of vulnerability. I'm only one of the more that as millions of of men are be they really contributed a lot of huge money. That that is what is paying those women that you are there that they are shouting on in Jile, in Jile media that if they are in pain that they've invested the thousands of pounds and dollars in this true only theory because they were promising them, you know, you just had delay, they will, you know. But look at all those ammunition and uh, all those bullets, everything. It seems he's that guy that, that commits suicide in, in Ghana. He's the, he's the one, chief of staff, he's the one that, you know, will not send the group by more in the or Nigeria for more. So, uh, you just have to get this woman so that, it, 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 so, so that they are not going to tarnish that name, Yoruba Nation, for us at all. No, because have, although the Buruku and one. we have to make sure platforms like this continue to set the record straight no matter anybody who run us straight to my platform trying to defend these lunatics we call them up we must continue to set the record straight because you see now eh exactly if you go search for yoruba nation on google now these are the guys <laughs> that will show up exactly all Baba. these arrest, all these killings all this stuff that's what we show up and Baba, Baba, if you see if you see a lot of people in nigeria now they were like i don't know you share I'll be wearing a language like Imagine. with your hey, hey. Baba, Yoruba. Baba, I was so, as supposed see, to kind of embrace in, in that on a day like that. Baba, they were supposed Baba, to in that that the, the, come and support you. Baba, since, but they have since that Saturday, I don't know Since that Saturday, I don't know Yoruba. I've been weak on this issue, like, like, it is a little embarrassment. I mean, I want to tell you, you know, the new government will go for contribution, try not to contribute to the community, but at the end of the day, it is, it is not going to end this way. At all, it won't. I can guarantee. Uh, anyway, Baba. So eventually, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Rise, uh, BJ. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, Baba. Okay. My regards. Yeah, yeah, for sure. As well, right? You take yeah, you too. Bye. Uh, what things they happen though? So I went on uh, YouTube last night, and um, there is this uh, 
a very respected uh, member of this platform who just stopped coming here. Mm -hmm. It's one of uh, these elderly women that I so much love. I mean, I haven't met her. When I say I love her, it's simply because of her dedication, her passion for uh, the Yoruba sovereign nation. She's a lady. I don't know if she's watching me right now. She's a lady who shares names with uh, the former queen of this country, of this kingdom, Elizabeth. I won't say the other. Um, I saw her there last night typing amen. Guess what they were praying for? But it is, listen to this. So they said on that Ijile on YouTube, okay? It was like around 12 midnight, by the way. So the, the caller, a guy was calling. I don't know where he was calling from. Obviously, he's not calling from Nigeria. And it was, they were reacting to this, what happened. And they were telling the people on that program that people should go out today. That are the area delay mm, is expected to come to Ibadan soon. And therefore, we want all our people not to let anybody change this. So, Yoruba nation has come up. Okay? They will, choose, they will shoot you, tear gas. So, all of you should come out tomorrow. That is today. He said, they will shoot tear gas. So, there's nothing special about tear gas. So, tear gas is just something that will just, it will, it will just pepper you in the eye a little bit. That little pain cannot be compared to the joy of our independence as a Yoruba dry you. Anybody, if they send anybody to our, to our midst to come and infiltrate us, eh, you should fish them out. And you should, I was like, ah, 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 egba me, egba me, egba me. Mama Elizabeth was there typing amen, amen. Now, Ogun, Ogun, Ogun will punish. Odudu, I will fight. Ogun, you know, we're we shake in the corn. Tomorrow, we must take our land. We have declared our independence. Nobody can stop us. No going back. Come on, this guy was saying that there. Mama Elizabeth was there typing amen. I actually saw her. And if you are watching me tonight, Ma, I was told before that you are part of them. I just never really believed it. And talking about uh, praying on the vulnerability of uh, the older Yoruba women, especially the ones abroad, by this group of uh, miscreants. Eh? It's so true. You need to go and see them when they talk, Baba. You go to wonder, say, ah, Egba, me, Ibu, mo, wai. She, you, Bala, on so, ah, we, Egba, me. That's the level at which our people have been taken advantage, or I mean, advantage of. One true emperor, you there? So I think I lost uh, my caller earlier. So I got another one in this place. Hello there. Hello, my ego. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm good, sir. You? Well, very well. I'm here. Still here. Thanks, brother. Yeah, it's, Ferd it's Ferdinand from Newcastle. That's my brother. Ferdy from Newcastle. <laughs> it's Newcastle today. Uh -huh. Fine, fine, very well. Um, I'll just go straight to the point because for some days now, um, I've been working and I was just giving two days off, so I decided Just to, to spend one of yeah. Hours. Yeah, right. yeah, no, I've been I've been following you even while I was working. It's only that I can't call because I put my AirPod in my ear and then put place my phone somewhere, but I follow everything that is happening and I also like the video, <laughs> so I've I've paid my own. Uh, Offering. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's very very important. I can't understand why we have over five thousand views and only about a few hundreds of people have liked this so video. Strange. I don't know. I know. The, the, the remaining numbers are they Abadonians? <laughs> All right. Anyway, yeah. So my, I, I, I'll just make it brief. Um, I, I just want to make two contributions. Um, you see about the Yoruba nation stuff. Um, there is something really messed up somewhere that we've not really been told. Um, on one side of the story, it looks as if some people are trying to like bring it 
without adequate planning or just for the mere fact to make history that, oh, we brought about the Yoruba nation and all that. And these people were blinded with their ego and um, carelessness and stupidity that they did not really think of the consequences or the repercussions that will follow. There is nothing wrong like with Yoruba education. You know, the, 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 the yeah. be like, okay, we want to do something, so we have we are convinced, we yeah. should be able to look at it fully. Enough that, exactly. okay, what is our exit plan? If it doesn't go as planned, exactly. what should we do? It, it doesn't seem exactly. to exactly. You had them there anyway. So those one didn't look like yeah, they they, who actually knew what they were doing. And I was right. Yeah. Like, it, you know, Betty, please. Exactly. Exactly. So now it, it reminds me of the issue of uh, IPOB. You know, um, when Nam the Khan was first released, he was going from place to place, you know, visiting places and people were welcoming him. He was coming with the idea of IPOB. He was visiting some of the Igbo speaking uh, parts of River State and or even River State, trying to like convince them of the need for us to form a I country. Are you yeah, he he was he was he was going place to place. He became a very, he was, became a more like statesman like after yeah. his uh, first kidnapping experience. I mean, he started talking it, it, to others and it, listen, we have exactly. a lot to share. And in exactly, fact, I'm like, go on, Baba. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, and he even talked about going to um, Benue State and Kogi State to visit our Igbo brothers that we are carved into those areas. Um, unfortunately, things turned out bad. You know, the federal government of Nigeria has a, a way of making a legitimate struggle look very bad. And I'm sensing that is what they want to do with this Yoruba nation team because I won't be surprised if they brand it a terrorist organization tomorrow and start See, on those going into. Governor, I've been told now. Uh, those same governor uh, has already said it. If you see anybody okay, you see. grouping themselves together for in the name of Yoruba nation, shoot them aside in Yoruba land. Imagine that. Imagine that. So that's 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 what these people did in Igbo land. You know, do you know these people came to the southeast and we are going into villages, killing young boys mm -hmm. and labeling them IPOB like terrorists. terrorists. Mm -hmm. And that is what that is their way of trying to like cross the entire idea and still keep people inside that contraption. So I think the federal government of Nigeria, because I know they are listening to this, they listen to this recording, they have their agents who try to brief them on whatever is happening, whatever conspiracy is happening outside Nigeria. But I think if they are hearing my voice, they should actually use this to know that the, 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 the contraption has really come to an end because the people you actually forced together they are not happy with each other when they keep saying the peace and unity of Nigeria is not negotiated. There is no peace and unity in Nigeria in the first place. So there cannot be any negotiations. It will be good if we all go our separate ways. And then the competition will be fair. You get it? If so, if an Igbo man wants to come to uh, Yoruba land, he can apply for visa. Or if the Yoruba government wants, they can get into uh, in talk with the um, uh, Biafran uh, nation and then decide to like, okay, we don't need visas to visit each other's country. They can trade within each other. They can do anything within each other. But let us have our own separate government. No that is all. I don't need anybody. And if they exactly, can do it, fine. If they can't, also fine. Let them have their uh, yeah. business in their own hands. Exactly. Exactly. This issue of one group, you know, forcing the other group to their own yeah. thing or trying to like, um, make these other people second class citizens or trying to like feed the whole country is theirs. It's totally absurd. I mean, since I moved to the UK here, yeah, I mean, I've been hearing this course talking about referendum. The, the, the British government has never treated them the way Nigerian government treats people. No. That is very, very horrible. They never my even talk down just, on us. The other thing no. that's doing, which we consider an insult, is that we will suffer if we leave uh, the, the union. It's, that's what they keep yeah. telling us. And that, to us in, the, in Scotland, we felt like it's an insult. Yeah, you, the, my good, you know, I was, mm -hmm. I was surprised when I, when I, when I visited Scotland, I realized you guys, your own pounds does not even have the face of the queen. No, we don't, we don't have the, the face of and the I'm queen. Like, and I'm like, oh, these people don't even have the face of the queen on their own currency, but it is still the same pounds and the same value, but it's just that they don't want the face of the queen on their currency. No. That's some amount of independence and uh, that's what we should have uh, yeah. that contraption. The Igbos should have yeah. their own money. The Yoruba yeah, should have their that, own money. 
they, is, is that every it? identified region, but they brought in American federal system of government that makes it look like oh, Which, we are all one, but we are agreed. But no, we but didn't. in 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 but in in is it makes they they call they call it Federal Republic of Nigeria, but it is not Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is no. Unity Republic of Nigeria, because there is no state police. The states are not autonomous. They all take orders from Abuja. They all look up to Abuja every month to to get paid and. To service some things, it is not a federal. Even to borrow money, they so, need Abuja approval. Yeah, imagine that. So it doesn't really make sense. And then the second thing I, I really want to say is, you see this Okwama killing. What you just said tonight is what happened from day one. If you remember, I told you that those soldiers went to do bunker. You did. You did. You did. <laughs> because because before I came down to the UK, you know, people they do this bunker, and I know how soldiers have been involved. In fact, they will go as far as burning evidence and destroying things. You get it? So this is what really happened. And the reason why Nigerian soldiers are not allowing people into that place is because they want to keep covering the truth. Now, what happens to those people that have been shot dead on the account of this Jamey cover-up and all, all, all other things? What happens to them? These are human beings for crying out sake. And the government should really do something about it. But again, don't be surprised that nothing will happen. You see, Nigerian soldiers are as corrupt as anything you can ever think. They are even more corrupt than the politicians. They've been this corrupt since independence. Israel, look at the yeah, stories we are reading yeah, about. Yeah, about now, look at the stories about the, about the military coup. Look at the stories we read about. They are called the soldiers of fortune for nothing. No. They no, are no, a bunch no. of rogues no. and their owners. Very, very, very thieves. Yeah. Nigerian, Nigerian military, they are so corrupt and they shouldn't really be, you know, people shouldn't really trust the soldiers. Then the Nigerian soldiers should actually them. ask, they should actually ask themselves one question. You see, in my, you know, in the UK here, yeah, just let me just take a little time. In the UK, yeah, we cooperate with the police. If the yes. police is asking questions, we cooperate with them. We love the police in the yes. UK because we see them as people who fight and secure us. Nigerian police and army, please ask yourselves, why is it that the citizens you are claiming to protect hate you with passion? They hate you with passion that they cannot afford to see you die. They rather see an enemy succeed than help Nigerian police or army in an investigation. Because these people are wicked. It's as if they hate the very citizens they are. They actually, they actually have a, a duty to protect. They hate the citizens with so much passion. I've never seen that kind of a thing before. My I have never myself. Let me just stop there. Thank you very much. God bless you, Ferdinand, my brother. God bless you again. And you have a wonderful uh, rest of your break. And greater week uh, ahead too right you have a good yeah, thank you so that's a ferdinand there from uh, castle of Ampa. new castle of Ampa. that's a different place castle, new castle. Uh, Pro, finally back in how are you tonight uh, this afternoon or is it evening over there uh, my ego shaka maleku my brother maleku shaka, baba. how are you tonight mm. This evening, I mean, now it should be evening in the uh, yeah, yeah, it's evening, it's evening, it's right. evening. Um, anyway, Papa. man, my go, mm -hmm. my go, I'm not feeling great, bro. I'm not feeling great. You might, I'm not feeling you. good. Oh, it's because of this bastard, these dry people, man. My go today, you know, you know, that I told you that over here, I always contend with these uh slaves over here, with these APC slaves and Nigerian zombies. But today they had their day, my good. Do you want me to tell you how they had their day today? My good, these people have been mocking me since yesterday, bro. Ah, yeah, hey, bro. you were shot at. You were like, take it, and bro, you, bro. Are, you can't even defend my it. My good, these people took shots at the emperor. And you are there, uh, you know, ah, like the boss. Like, I did, nah. My good, at the emperor now. My, my, my boy, the inside, go, inside, the pain. My go, my Tell skin me. is thick. They were, they were mocking, they were mocking us, bro. They mocked us today. They mocked me today. But you know what I did? What did you do? I smiled. Mm -hmm. I smiled, and and I told one of them in the face, and I said, "You, you, you can take shots, you can laugh and all that, but at the end of the day." You know that when you look at me, you know you're not looking at a slave. You're not looking at a zombie. You know, and you know that I will never support Onitiri. So yes, laugh at the whole movement. You have the right to do so because Onitiri has embarrassed us, whether we like it or not, as Yorubas. 
So of course I took my shots, I took my leaks. But at the end of the day, it will still be them that will suffer. I'm not going to be the one that so will suffer. I'm still trapped in that contraption until we are exactly. Exactly. So they can laugh at us today, they can mock us today. But do you know the painful thing? One you know the painful thing about and the other is and one is going to be permanent. But the saddest thing about this whole thing is that most of the people that were mocking me say, ah, one true, uh, Yoruba nation, this Yoruba nation, that. So you know, see, I'm now. Most of them were my fellow Yoruba brothers, bro. That's the painful thing. Like, what only Tiri has I don't done? Think any Yoruba. Hang on, let's even put only Tiri on the side, I mean, on the side, just for one second now, okay? What would make an average Yoruba to actually hate the idea of Yoruba sovereignty. I am still trying to figure that out. It's not as if Nigeria is telling us anything per se that will say, oh yeah, I, you know, but they will confidently tell exactly. you that you're on your own, no? Yoruba nation, call Yoruba nation. Ne? Nigeria will be great. This country eh, is not going that. to break up. What exactly makes a, see, an average Yoruba to hate the idea? My go, I, I don't see it is, it is like you said, it's that contraption called Nigeria. That's why I classify the Arabic Nigeria as a slave and zombie. Because they don't have in-depth reasoning or critical thinking. Like I they understand, don't understand. Say, no. see, I understand if somebody says, no, I don't support the idea, and they tell you their reasons. I say, well, you know what? I, I this is why this is why this is why. But I'm talking about mm -hmm. those that were out trikey, out trikey, mock it. Mm -hmm. Mock the yeah, idea. that was the painful thing. My like, you are in Yoruba, painful thing. or you are Igbo, you are mocking the idea of independence. Like, for See, Nigeria, Baba, that was the painful Nigeria, you prefer thing, Nigeria, but you then mock the idea of independence of who you are. <laughs> like, how is See, that? My goal, my goal, my goal, that was the painful thing today because, yes, only Siri and our dry followers, we all know what they are, they are useless and mad people. But the fact that the mocking. Like the way they were mocking, it's not like they were mocking Onitiri and Dra. They were mocking the idea, as you said, of we Yorubas being our own nation, being independent, moving forward. That was, you know, that was the thing that, that was the reason why I could not talk about because even though they were taking shots at me, I just felt pity for them. Like, they, it's like they don't understand. And that's the problem with most of these people mocking us now. They are not mocking Onitiri. They are mocking the yeah, whole mocking movement. The idea of self the idea of independence, the idea of self uh, determination, the idea of progressive and forward thinking. That is what these people are mocking, and that's and that is the saddest thing. Am I good? This am I good? You know when you play that interview, especially that girl's interview of saying she wanted to go and join Air Force, and she left joining the Air Force to follow a movement. Based on the promise that they will give her and her family money, no more yeah, suffering and poverty. They will no longer but, have to suffer. But see, see, my boy, hold on, no. I'm not saying the Nigeria Air Force is good, though. But at least if you join the Nigeria Air Force, they go give you salary. At least. At least they go give you salary. So you are joining a movement that they did not even give you proper orientation, proper education, just based on the promise of food. Nigerians still think that their problem is food. <laughs> Reboot Calabar or more, those slaves never see anything. My goal, everything is coming to place now. Do not be surprised. You see, you've already said it that people that might start really talking about Yoruba nation genuinely, their life could be in danger in Nigeria now. I have friends that believe in Yoruba nation in Nigeria now. Or more, or more, they are not even saying it again. They don't, they don't come down and they talk to you. Because even their own fellow Yoruba around them. See, my good, even their own fellow Yoruba them, their own fellow Yorubas around them, they think they are part of Oniti. So once you mention Yoruba nation in Nigeria now, they will think they are part of that that wasted soul movement. So let's forget about that. Let us now go with to the people of uh, Okwama. Seriously, my heart goes out to those people. Like it is a it is a shame what is going on right now to the Okuoma people. But I'm not surprised. But <laughs> what makes me laugh is that they are begging for government to come and help them. Now that's the painful thing. Like 
the painful thing is that I know that no government is coming to help them, but they believe that government is coming to help them. My God, these people are making videos inside the forest. I know. With little children, little kids, little boys, little I girls. I have been in and those forests now for weeks. So there are those who have been me. in that forest for weeks now. Because they cannot have a, they can't leave the forest to come on the on the uh, water to cross over to the proper places without the soldiers catching them. So if I just they get trapped in. They will be shot. I'm seeing all these things. And yeah, the painful thing is that I know nobody is going to save them. I know no Nigerian government is going there. But when I see those videos and I'm hearing their plea for the government, government help, please, I'm just like, help wow. Help. Government, come on. I'm help like, help. You, know, you, know, you, know, you know, when I'm seeing this video, in my mind, I feel like, how can I send a telepathic message to them and let them know that no government is coming to save you? That's As finding all that possible move. for you being in that bush. Exactly. Exactly. And it, it just pays me because as a father and I see those children, like that's what hurting me the most. I'm seeing kids not eating for days, no water for days, Bring mosquitoes their, biting their, them. To their tired, their mothers, like that. And Skate. yes, and yes, and yes, there are bastards and slaves. Some of them in this comment section that believe Nigeria should exist. Let's forget about that. Want... Let us now go to let's now go to do what immediately. Michael, you've said it. These people are, are praising that say Nigeria is doing well. Let us wait. Let, let us wait till December. And then I will come back and, and finish this statement. Let me let other people to call. I'll Thank you for all you do, two. bro. One through emperor. Have a good day. Very long time. By the time you get to, to May, May is next month, Abi. You should be looking yeah, May is next month. Day. December is a long by December, eh? you could not become prophets. Ah, no, 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 see, 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 my good, my good, don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to speak what I want to about to the Jua immediately now. Let December come. You will write that on that t-shirt. Okay. No worries. <laughs> Later. Thank uh, you, man. Eh? Thank you so much eh, for that. One true emperor. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got like um half an hour to go. If you have intention of calling in, I think you should try it now. Don't wait till last minute. Here is my caller again. Hello there. Hello, my ego. Hello, sir. How are you? Good morning. Good. Uh, is that uh, Paul? Yes, yes, my ego. Good morning. I know that. Uh, well, that's like uh, either Dubai, UAE, or India. But your voice gave you up. So. Paul, how are you today? <laughs> I'm fine, my ego. I'm fine. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Go on, please. Yeah. First of all, I want to appreciate you again Thanks. for for everything, holistically, your sacrifices and everything you do. May God continue to bless you and uplift you. you too, man. Thank you. Thanks, man. Um, I just wanted to say something briefly because I know there will be a lot of people on the line. Um, I don't know why we it's like we're all behaving as if Onitiri is, is new. What I mean is that this the establishment, they are masters of espionage, they know how to infiltrate. That is what they do. Onitiri is not different from a pampas, it's the same script. They will not look for her. They sent her to destabilize the course. That is what they sent her to do. And to some extent, because of the foolishness of some of our people, they've succeeded. Because what they've done now will drag us back a bit. We cannot deny that fact. Honestly. It will drag, it will drag us back. We just have to open ourselves to that reality. It will. It will drag us back. But we should not... Uh, pretend as if we don't know that that she's part of them. That that's the part I'm finding really funny. Everyone is feeling like how oh, they should search for her. They should. They, they will not do anything. She has accomplished what they sent her to do. The script is just like the that of uh, Lamiti, a papa that they sent to destabilize the Labour Party. It's the same script, my own. It's just espionage. Thank you. Hmm. Oh. Well, you have dropped that uh, as it is odd. A lot of people are also possibly going to be thinking at all, are already thinking along that line too. Well, I would love to hear you say it to me, if you can. 
and do that. Hello, my good general. Oh, this is your Prince Abdullah, the African Wahala. Bro, how are you doing today? Yes, sir. I'm doing very well, brother. That's grand. Please go on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. First and foremost, thank you. Thank you and thank you. I can't stop thanking you at this point. You are you are already probably tired of people thanking you all the time. But your sacrifices are really I'm appreciate. grateful for you saying thank that you. because uh that in itself is a show of uh, appreciation that whatever it this is to you, Megan, we really do appreciate you. And it's a reminder that what I'm doing is worth it. So thank you. Say, yes. They don't ever yes. do too much like it's too much. Let me be the judge. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Right? <laughs> exactly. I'll tell you when it's too much, but yeah. I don't think it is. But it's good. So okay. All of that. Okay, perfect. You do behind the scene too, because some people need to know that I do have a lot of people around me that, you know, I would say I have been blessed with. And you are one of them. And yes. I should say thank you to you too and people like yourself who are in that cycle. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Allah, thank please. you, brother. Yes, sir. So um I called um the first reason I called is because of the young in fact the first point is um Ferdinand. I, I need to respond to something that you said about the Nigerian military and the soldiers. Um so from my own standpoint, personal point of view, I'm speaking for myself, the African Wahala, Adiwali. Um the Nigerian police is the first terror group in Nigeria. That's in my own perspective. I'm not speaking for anybody else, but the first terror group in Nigeria is the Nigerian police. The second terror group is the Nigerian army. It doesn't mean every one of in them is order. evil, oh, but- In no particular order. No, in that order. The, the, the army is more brutal than the police, but the police has more access to the citizens so the citizens suffer from brutalization, kidnapping, killings by the police more than the army. But the army kills and destroys and kidnaps people as well. Then after those two terror groups, then we can start talking about Boko Haram, um, Fulani terrorists, Iswa, in that order. And the reason why these guys, I'm talking about the state-sanctioned terror groups, the military and the police, the reason why they are that way is because if we are being honest, an average Nigerian has a little bit of terrorism in it. Let's 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 keep it real. Because Potential the way we are wired to be people, narcissistic. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, the way we, the way Nigeria has shaped the majority of us is that it's in such a way that you have to trample on someone else in order to get to the next level. And you don't give it then. All you have to do is have a very savage mindset, trample on anybody trampleable as far as you can get to the next level in life. I never That's what Nigeria has it's shaped up to. Caught, like, exactly. like, ah, how could you do that? Ah, that is so hey, much. And that is why every wrong thing you can do, you just, I mean, just don't get caught. Trample on people's rights, eat other people. You get what you want. It's hey, fact, my, my ego. <laughs> Let me add a caveat to that. Please. You can't even get caught. That's how ridiculous Nigeria is. You can afford to get caught. Just be connected to the criminal politicians and you're good. I mean nothing. Wow. That's how Nigeria is. And nothing would happen to you. So that's that's why those people are savages. Number two, the young lady that was interviewed amongst the people that were um, interrogated by the first terror group, the, the so-called police, I felt bad for her because she sounded like she's in her early 20s. She's confused about life, the way millions of Nigerians are, the way I was when I was in that age group. We had nothing. She said, I finished high school. After high school, I tried to get a job in the Air Force. And then some people told me to come join this Yoruba Nation agitation because the intention of Yoruba Nation is to improve our standard of living. And she made that choice. I'm not going to blame her. A lot of people are roasting these people like, oh, you guys are so foolish. Why would you follow them? In fact, the only criticism I have for their entire moves is that they didn't plan properly. Because for me, I support anybody that is going against the government of the contraption. If you want to go that far, make it real. Don't yes, that's my only easy, critique. Easy, easy, easy pray. 
Exactly. Ex Muslim and make themselves feel like they are so good in, at their job. That's why they call it. Exactly. Them. It's real. That's imagine the too. That, that's me. That's it for me. That's it for me because for me, I I'll be honest. A part of me supports them giving these criminal politicians hell. Give them hell. Take away power from them. However, do it in such a way that you wouldn't be ridiculed. But at the same time, the reason why they are ridiculed, they couldn't plan this way, is because those people are these are poverty stricken people without guidance, without a life, without money. Yeah, They've been in poverty. They said that, uh, well, they were not shooting at you. So did you shoot back at them? And he said, no, I don't know how to shoot gun. I don't know how to handle that. But he put on uniform, military uniform, to go and take over the secretariat. But he didn't know how to shoot gun. So he picked his race. You know, he, you know, that's embarrassing. Oh, just unfortunate. Yeah, very unfortunate. But yeah, that's my contribution. Thank you so much. Please, people, click on that like button. Please. Please, just click on the like button. Just just click just click on the like button exactly. that's all just click just go there thank you, you. Done. yeah just yeah. Once. and that's it and once you click it yeah. into a turn blue to show you that you've clicked it okay then you can leave the african world yeah. god bless you man thank you so much yes sir okay. thank I'll you thank you too brother now i do have another caller if i am very much not confused like a 20 year old like africa wahala said this should be ca from uh is that you? Correct. See you from Atlanta. Yes. I'm not confused because I'm in my 40s. So, which simply means that uh, <laughs> I figured it out. See, how are you today? Yeah, it's exactly, it's, it's exactly 5 36 p.m. in Atlanta. It is evening. Sunny day. Sunny day. Yeah. Lovely day. Fantastic. It was so sunny uh, in Glasgow today as well, but it was a, yeah. a stamp sunny because it was cold too. Bye, Bye Yugo. See you. I don't say don't say because I'm not a Yoruba person, no, but like what that caller said, that's why I've been trying to call you saying, Are you sure this is not the setup, my I am not sure. But people are beginning to make you sure it's, it's sure it's you sure it's, it's not a setup. Yeah. This guy is a Maradona. This guy is a Maradona. It's a Maradona, trust me. These guys can do anything. But no, but you could just look at it. Somebody just comes and reads something on TV and sends some people out to go. TV on Facebook. Yeah. And sends some people out to go and do some stuff. Just look at it. I mean, I don't know, but I, I just smell, I mean, something is not right, my yeah, Exactly. But I will agree. Something is not right. Something, something is not right. It's not really right. It is either the. Uh, yes. Just stupid. Oh. The people they sent were the stupid ones, but those who sent them, they knew what My people, people can people they can targeted. people can do anything. Yeah, they targeted people can do anything for money. You see that? Yes, people see. can do anything for money. People can do anything for money, trust me. In Nigeria, we know people can do anything for money, trust me. I'm telling you, they can do anything for money. So I, I've been thinking about this since three, four days since it happened. I've been looking. Like, I mean, it, it, it just brings Yes, it just bring the momentum down, the European national agitation momentum down. It's going to take time for people to recover and you know to sow just sort of uh, and be able to yes seed of uh, seed of discord among people. Say, oh, she be uh, European national delay. Yeah, no, ah, blah, 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 Honestly, because we all know what it stands for. I mean, they try to infiltrate everything, every camp, everywhere. That's what they do. That's that's, what they do. that's their job. That, that's what they do. Well, that's why I called. I, I wouldn't have called. But I because of this you, issue, I, I said, no, see, let me just... See, is that yeah. uh, now I used to say to people that if you, if you think something and you say it, and then you are like, I don't know, I'm just, I don't know, I just, that just came to my mind. There's something you should know, Baba. You are not the only yeah. person thinking it. Now, see, yeah. somebody called in yesterday, said, I mean, two people actually said the same thing yesterday, but differently. Today, uh, the African Walla, who happened to be the last caller, was very much uh, clearer by saying, mm, I don't see this. So now I know that he's not the only one thinking it. You are thinking along the line. Therefore, a lot of people probably on this platform have the same thoughts. See Thank you so much for yeah. contributing to this. Okay? Thank you, my You should have a good Thank day, you. sir. Right? Nice one.
So that's a CA from uh, Atlanta. He hasn't changed his uh, profile picture. That was my easy guess. If he changes that, I would never ever get to. Yeah. Time. How are you, my yeah, good? Very well. How are you? Uh, how are you? Hey, I'm doing fine. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening from you. Uh, I'll be trying to get a hold of you. About, anyway, I didn't start the program all the way. I kind of started it halfway. Okay. But a quick one. Yes, sir. Quick Please. one. Let me jump in on. Mm -hmm. um, the the new uh, the new Oduduwa Nation thing that was going on. Um, those, those everybody want to know. Everybody try to get every miss or any heart to make sure that Nigeria is no longer exist. Because the people are tired. That's right. People are tired. Because this government is for the government for themselves, not for the people. And if we see what's going on in that zoo right now called Nigeria, it was a lot of things that are going on there. They keep suppressing the poor people. And where the rich are getting rich for themselves, and they have their friends, they have their family. And those who they're calling their leaders are no longer care about them or what how their life is. There is no education. There is nothing. So anybody who finds the easy way that he can find that, make sure they get a little bit pay to join to make sure the Nigeria is yeah. brought down. They yeah. will join. But the, prob the problem we have now, how can we educate those people and make sure they don't make a big mistake? Because these criminals, they're looking at any mistake they can use to tag this or do the one nation as a terrorist group. Right. For those people, when you look at the people that was claiming they are police, and you see most of them speaking Yoruba, mm -hmm. but I have a question from them. Mm -hmm. I have a question from them. Have they ever asked themselves, all this northern region, where they have all these, all kinds of terrorists, full of that, that part of Nigeria, and they fully armed, from head to toe. Yes. Who's sponsoring all these people? Who is how their are sponsor? They getting protection from the authority? And how did they get protection from the government? And who is among them in that government that keep protecting these people? And when you look at them, you can see what happened now. They hold a foreign guy up the ground now, they demand the money. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking to this or uh, all these criminal police and the army, especially people, all these Yoruba people in the armed forces. Mm -hmm. Have they never thought about that and who is sponsoring them? And how have Nigerian government handled these people, a dangerous terrorist people? I have no idea what and type your... of uh, water, Mazi. I have no, I don't understand the type of uh, water or the type of uh, hair they sort of uh, breathe, right? I, I yes. can tell you this confidently, sir, right? That the Yorubas that I know who are part of the Nigerian police or the Nigerian army or DSS or what have you, eh? I can say this for free. I do not have evidence so, of actual evidence, but from my own life experience, I can say this, that more than 70% of them, they are loyal to Nigeria. They will kill any Yoruba who stands on their way so that they can go get promotion and say they are loyal to Nigeria. I have seen it happen many times. And that is yeah, dangerous. But Nigeria, 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 they're protecting. Nigeria, they're protecting. No matter it's not how even Nigeria mistreats them. them. That's why being Yoruba, no matter yeah. how Nigeria mistreats them, they will still remain loyal to that place. And whatever and, they are told and, to do, they will do it. And and when does it become a law? As the governor, uh, uh, they call it the uh, uh, chief of security of their own state. When does it become a law that you can tell somebody and to shoot, shoot somebody aside? Is that there is no any a any law? Uh, there is no any place. I told me if somebody there commits no a crime, you take them to court. Face to them, but you already ordered that they should be killed. Like, are you really serious? To, to kill them, yeah. so that you can enjoy being a governor of Nigeria that continues to impoverish his own people. So anybody standing up for Yoruba Nation anywhere, shoot them aside. Are you serious? But that's what they have done to us now. And the reason why these people get in upper handed, they know that Nigeria is confused. It is a very confused country that all put together. 
Because every time one group try to find a way to make a things easy life for other people, if we see the traitors and if we see all these people from nowhere oh, getting man. the government promising money, are you still living in the same country and the same thing could continue happening over from year to year? As you reason it, the history had in Nigeria came about yeah. and you can see all kinds of corruption. I had this country come about. Yeah. I have all this have been doing and other countries are moving forward and Nigeria keep moving back. And first of all, Nigeria is not even created by the people no. that they call themselves. It's just some tribe of uh, other, other states or tribal something, they join together and just give them a name. And what, second of all, what I'm trying to say is by the time all these people, all these tribal, all these Yoruba, Igbo, or Chiketiri, or whatever, in the same police, is about the time they wake up and see what is wrong with Nigeria and take an action for it. It's not when the individual try to make a country to become a country. They're tagging them a terrorist. We are the terrorist people. They're sponsored by the same government uh, in, the, the, in the northern region. And he can never send the ministry over there to tell them, shoot anybody aside. Anybody you see mentioning a Boko Haram, shoot them aside. But only in the order. western, only, only in the south and the part of the eastern region, where all these governors and call them all these foolish, illiterate government of the calling themselves a governor or whatever what they call for, call themselves really as the leader, especially in the east and the south. And when you see all this northern region, they cannot condemn a condemn and the not they no legal know the reason why they keep you know, promoting those people. And you yourself, you can't reach it. And you can take, and know these people as your brother. And when they look for you today, when they send all those terrorists to come and kill you, that's what people who do with you. When you finish mm -hmm. killing them and they send those people to so come and kill you, who's going to protect you? Hmm. Who going to stand for you? Ah, Why are Thank they keep doing all this nonsense in the name of government of Nigeria? They need to stop that. My, let me leave you for here. Oh, Thank you very much for taking you. my I call. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for that, right? You have a good right, Thank you. Mm? Nice How you too, man. I love that. So, um, yes, let's tell them. And like I said before, the reason why you are watching this uh, channel or you are watching this in particular is to uh, help pop those of us that will later in life Pretended that you did not know. I didn't know it was that bad. So this, this platform will help you understand how bad it is and how much role you are playing in enabling it. Whatever excuse you are giving, when that time comes, you will never be able to pretend that you did not know. So we're putting them on the, on the table for everyone. You are in Yoruba, but you are so happy. Eh? Austin, how are you tonight? Yeah, my yeah. I'm fine, oh. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm really fine. Fantastic. Glad you are not on the road today, or you are. Are you? I'm still I'm still on the road, but I was uh, I, I didn't want to call this night, honestly. I didn't want to call. Okay, but, let's um, make it quick, all right? So I, I won't distract you further. Yeah. yeah bye bye. No, no, pro no, no problem. I'm okay. Um, one of our brother, one of the members of the temple just uh, met me to call because he emphasized on what I was saying. I, I am hundred and more than I'm more, I'm more than three hundred percent sure of what I'm saying. Good. I'm telling you honestly. I'm telling you. I said yesterday. Can you imagine someone that wake up to know the consequences of what he's going to face if he's not killed? He will kill someone, and he will go there and said he don't know how to shoot gun, and he said he went to buy food stuff, mm -hmm. and, and he said he she, she wanted to she said she wanted to enter air force. Yeah, how can you believe such a thing? How can you believe such a thing? And none of them was killed, and one none of them was killed. One of them, my dear, let me tell you one. So, by the way, just so you know, yeah, yeah, just to, cover up, yeah, yeah. just to cover up, mm -hmm. just to cover, just to cover. Just, just to cover up. In Imo State, in Imo State, the guys are starting to come up blood. In Imo State, the guys are starting to come up blood. The army, the police later on start killing them. They know what they are doing. When they want to cover up, they know what they are doing. So what I want to say is that I'm like Africa Wahala said. 
the problem in Nigeria is too much. People are confused. People don't even know um, uh, what is um, good or bad again. I'm telling you, the hunger is too much. So when someone is confused, she just finished school, like she said, let's agree that that's exactly what, what happened. It's not, it's not the stage manager. Yeah, that she, she just finished school. She's now thinking, what is my future? How is my, what am I going to feed? Many of the people in Nigeria are not even having even monthly 50,000 in their, in, their, in their home, the, the entire family. How are they going to survive? So whatever that comes is what they are going to take. That is how the government have shadowed, shared, shaped everyone. So if you are not careful, you become, you be among them. I was just telling my wife last time, and I said, thank God that I, I struggled to come out. Because if not, I will be among uh, I mean, you would have to find that way ESM out of all of this. I told um, people to. And definitely, definitely, I mean, definitely. There is nothing like it. Number one, I can't, I can't yeah. stop me myself yeah. to be a victim and suffer. Yeah. To suffer the world together at the end. I'll be away between this. Because I can't exactly. be a victim. Exactly. exactly. So now, the second thing I was saying is the point you are making. You are making a strong point that if I am going, because anything that will make anyone to go against Nigeria, I'm in support of it. Hmm. Honestly. I mean, so for total support of it. If I am to go, to go and fight with a gun, I am going to fight to finish. I am not going to go there to, to start That killer. is something that should be significant. Rather than me getting being, yeah. be, uh, yeah. watching this Austin, right? I get a training, and then we all yeah. agree that, okay, seven of you are going to go take over government house in Baden. And they have already told us what yeah. to yeah. So you get, so they've told me more yeah. options. Yeah. You may not come back. Let's take yeah. this. this one says, Sasha, yeah. Yeah. You may yeah. not come up, but here is the problem. Like, it is kind of that mission. Exactly. Uh, we know that yeah. I would rather shoot nobody for, them, for me to carry gun and then wait and say, Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I will I will level, I will level everywhere. Because yeah. <laughs> you have to enter the hall yeah. where they are doing the upper meeting, and I will tell all of them that uh, yeah. we have a we have an attached pump to all entrances, all entrances here. Yeah. Anybody try to call me, you will die. If you are back, if you try to leave this room, you will die. Even though there is no Definitely. problem. Definitely. That's what I'm saying. First delay everybody. That, that is. But look at what happened. Yeah. Go on, Austin. Sorry. That is why I said that. That is why I say it is very, very suspicious because these guys are grandmasters. They know how to do their things. They know how to do it. So they, 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 there is one of the caller that said, um, the, the, the woman that planned this thing. You know, everybody knows that she is not from today. It has been for a long time. It is like that. They infiltrate in, in every organization that they, they know that these guys have power. They know that these guys have power. So what they do, they cheat in their people to come in and say, um, reduce this pressure. Please reduce this pressure. Make sure that whatever you can do. They will promise money. They will do everything. They will sponsor everything. Then if it doesn't work, that is when they come with data force. Now bring all their forces. So that is that, 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 that is how Nigeria that, that is how Nigeria functions. That is number one. Number two, if people are looking for terrorists in Nigeria, there is no terrorist in Nigeria, it's only the military. I am telling you honestly, the military are the terrorists in Nigeria. They do all manner of things, all manner of things. Do you know that kidnapping southeast in Okiwe, in most states, where they pay ransom is the military zone where the military have their second point. There are many, many evidence to that. Where people said do you know do you yeah. do you know do you know where the where the governor of Adia State went to um dislodge um, the cattle market? Do you know, know the military bodies military, military hmm. of this area? Huh? How many bodies are found there? So the criminals in Nigeria, the kidnappers in Nigeria, the terrorists in Nigeria, military are part of it. They want to open my or whatever they call it to go and do illegal business. And they didn't even they don't even want people to talk, they start killing people. I know. That's their functions. That's what they are doing. So there is no way this Okoma people will get justice. Even now that they have investigated and see the truth, the Nigerian media, the Nigerian government will still cover it because the government of today is illegitimate. They are afraid of they think that the military might the somehow military and wake up. But the military but the military the military will never wake up because both of them are in, are in the same bed. They will never wake up. They will never do the needful. And even me, sorry to say this, even people that are, are saying, let the military take over, I am not praying for military to take over because okay. they are what? Remember when I said that? They are what? Right? I said, yeah, yeah, you, you, you said it. 
But I just hope you yeah. know what you are praying for. And I hope, they are, uh, they are, you know... <clears throat> Uh, they are worst. I, I witnessed the time of um, Abacha, I witnessed the time of Babangida. I wit they are really they worst. Are really worst. You can't say anything. No. Yeah, they are really worst. So all these things we are we are looking for terrorists. The terrorists are the military. The, the Nigerian government are the terrorists. So any good by their deeds, by their actions and inactions, they are the Terror group. Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. I got you. I got you. Sorry, I got you. No, fantastic. Hello? I can still hear you too. Awesome. Can you yeah. still hear me, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, I hear you very well. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. So, so the Nigerian government are the terrorists. The Nigerian government are the um are the problem of Nigeria because whatever you are doing, you have to watch the head. If they get the head, get it right. The members of the other bodies will get it right. Yeah. The Nigerian head. Hmm. They are not getting it right, and they will never get it right. They are slaves. They are masters. They are slaves into their into their into their hand master. They are they are, they are, um, they are masters. Like there is something that you mentioned when I joined in because I joined a little a little bit late. Right. You are talking about the IMF and the, the International Monetary oh, Fund and the, and, the, hmm. and 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 the World Bank. Who on earth, which in, in his right senses, will go and take advice from IMF? Yeah. Who on earth? Like for all we even though I don't love to even 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 Shora is all, among all of the candidates. Shora is the only one that came out and condemned the IMF and the, and the, I, um, and the um, World Bank. The only Shora, all of them, none, none of them have come out and said IMF this, IMF that. Hmm. Only Shora. So that's to tell you, if if Nigeria really wants to function, how do you want to go and take advice of someone that is giving you loan, someone that know Not that very very well? Not in no investment, no investment. So when I was asking questions, have you seen anywhere IMF entered and come out and that country became a country? No. They are not bringing... They are not, they are not bring, In fact, it became no, part of no way. Africa, they have African country's policies never to do business with IMF and World Bank, ever. So yeah. African countries yeah. actually make it yeah. policy in their country. Don't ever yeah. want to come back to the yeah. country, ever. Yeah. So, so this is Nigeria for you. They are so much happy. Uh, we, we, we went to the meeting with the IMF today. Uh, we have a, we have a, a robot the meeting. That's how they figure it. What bank uh, said we are doing? We fine. are doing fine. So we are doing. We fine. are doing fine. And where are we today? So the problem of Nigeria relies in the hands of Nigeria. The moment Nigeria doesn't want to split, Nigeria has to. All of us have to stand up and say. Let's go our separate will that's the only option. There is no that other the option. Of there is no you other option. Austin, thank you. There so is no much. other yeah, there is no other option. You thank you. You are welcome, my dear. You are welcome, my dear. God bless you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank Austin you. Austin there from uh, Germany, uh, a very good uh, member of this uh, temple, a veteran indeed. But my time is up. I have a caller. Is a controversial figure, but I'm still going to give him that. Elder <laughs> Kola, I was closing the shop before you called in that she had she pure water, so I had to put up the shutter. I said, "Okay, yeah, we do. You've got just two minutes. <laughs> How are you?" Oh, yeah, nice to hear from you. Know, you. Thank you, know, you, you know for what I mean, you like when you are like rushing to that store, they are shutting. They're like that. <laughs> hey, oh. hey, 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 oh. hey, hey, <laughs> I said, "I know, so polo, 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 I was about to shoot. Yeah. I was like, oh. I'll be I'll, I'll be so fast. I've uh, read this uh, yes, sir. <laughs> paragraph uh, here before, right. and I want to remind people about it. Uh, it was uh, Lamido that mentioned it. He said Nigeria, he said, is too weak to break. Who will break it? The honorary person in Jegawa or the honorary person in Shokoto or the honorary person in Bayesa? Hmm. Is it the group organizer or Yoruba woman selling kerosene by the roadside or the Okada mine data? They don't have the capacity to unite because they are burdened by poverty. We have taken away from their taken away from them their dignity, their their self esteem, their pride, and self worth. So they cannot even organize. 
So the reality, that, that is the reality we face. He said it the way, the reality on ground. Mm -hmm. This guy is high profile that even Ambassador at, at one point supported to be president of Nigeria. And he's the one saying this, that um, Nigeria, where they reduce us to, um, to, to, to worthless things. Even few things that we consider worthless are actually more valuable than most Nigerians, the way these people have uh, divided the people, divided and conquered. This is why whenever I see people during election running after one politician or the other, uh, people like us will always support you, right? Because it, well, not because we believe he could win, but we know that he's saying the truth. Any other politician in that last election uh, is just playing game with people's uh, emotions and all that. And that is the reality. And this is what we all have to understand. Or do we start to leave our differences behind and come together as one strong force? The youth of Nigeria is more than 50, 60 percent of the electorate. Not because I don't believe they will not rig our election, they will do so. But when we start to come together and start to make our voice known the way we should, rather than to be looking for one politician or the other, then, then we start to make a difference. Elder. Right, yeah. we are still going to need a politician yeah. in that regard. If the conversation is around, mm. eh, let's come together. It's not. Don't you think? I mean, like in that in that regard, though, I'm not talking about other ones like us, championing self determination yeah. and all that, right? It's, but I'm talking about those yeah. who say that you you said something I, about fifty percent to seventy percent of the young people are waking up the. I I don't believe uh, Shogore is a politician because no politician will be tell, telling you the truth. What most politicians do is to deceive See people to, to make you lies. comfortable, to make you comfortable. But if they know that the all, all the youth, like the fifty percent or even sixty percent of our youth, are supporting Shogore, it then means not only are they supporting Shogore personality, they are supporting what he's saying. So eventually, this will accumulate to a uh, force. Because let me tell you, Nigeria, these people are not going to leave Nigeria until we force them out by force, by everything possible. The, the way people are doing it right now, I don't believe. You know, in every society, we have the saboteur, we have the people who are looking for crunches uh, to, to heat on the politician's table. When, when they went to a go house, do you know that they brought some babala there to... To, to help them to get it to come out to come out <laughs> so it's it's they are all there in every society either in Igbo land or Yoruba land there are people that are going to you know capitalize on the situation to feed their own belly greedy people and all that they are always there so don't believe that all these people that are suffering if you are coming out to speak for them that they will they will embrace you no they they will be looking at what can put food in my stomach, even if it is for one day. I don't care what is going to happen tomorrow. You have such people in all the society, in essence. So uh, this is why we will always lack the capacity to organize together, to make our voice known, until we start to we come to together in a very unique way. Look yeah. at what happened in Egypt. Look at what happened during the Arab uh, rise. People stood up and they said they are not letting go. The soldiers were shooting, no way. We until we get to the end of this, and this is what Nigeria needs. The answer is just one thing. Even when you look at the answer, how do they break it? They pay some youth to come and create problem for the people organizing for answer. So and all that, and this is why you know we ought to um, uh, be alert and uh, try to educate our youth. And thank you that you are doing that more than anybody as I know, and uh, we'll continue to do that. Or once the education gets through. And people are tired. At least, let's say 70 or 80 percent of the people suffering in Nigeria say they are tired. At that point, they will become a very strong voice that is very unstoppable. And until that I time, that. Uh, the, the trouble continues. It's the trouble suffering continues. continues. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much, yeah. Elder. Right? That's fair. Okay. Right? That was fair. So thank you very much for calling in. Okay. I am going to see you some other time too. Hmm? You have a good one, sir. That's uh, Elder Akiola. Uh, all the way from the U.S. as well. Now my time is now overshot, officially. So I'm going to say thank you to everyone of us uh, for tonight. And as usual, we've had our own uh, a little bit of an update. You will say some level of information, some new informations that you probably would make use of. Depends on where it is applicable to you. And above all, you know better now. You know better now. And they say, if you know better, the ideal thing for you is to do better. Eh? You should be better off than what, or like what you were 
before the beginning of this video, those telling you that Nigeria will be great are lying to you. Nigeria will never be great. Because all the actions of uh, those criminals who could actually help make it great, eh, all their actions are going to continue to undermine that greatness, except what it is currently offering us. Now, I believe in self-destruct button that these criminals are going to press that, like Elder Akiola said, who is going to break up Nigeria? And who is going to make Nigeria uh, sort of a great when the criminals, career criminals in Nigeria, are continuing to do all they can to destroy her? Uh, is it that uh, Bolisela, eh, Enoshudi, or that organizer on the roadside in Aba? Or is it going to be that fisherman eh, using that his wooden small kennel on the creek of Bayelsa? They are all to be labeled with uh, the economic uh, problems that these criminals are unleashing on them, than for them to, to have enough uh, uh, sort of uh, time for the breakup or fixing of Nigeria or making Nigeria great with uh, proper education enlightenment daily, like this uh, platform, we have a chance. Mm -hmm. A lot of people believe that uh, we do have a chance, I mean, a chance, eh? at making a difference so if we know better something you don't know is all right you don't know but when you do know as they say if you know better you should do better and let that uh, possibly eh, really show up on you so thank you so much every one of us uh, for tonight i will see you some other time i promise you this samara we will start our reading early enough tomorrow Please do join me then. A fatherless people by Dele Ogun, remember? That will be tomorrow. Until then, good night.
Like every corner, nooks and cranny of all these bad, bad people where they spoil our country. <laughs> so my people make me laugh. Oh, yeah, yeah. My people make me shout. Oh, yeah, yeah. My people make me shout. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man do they talk. He do they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day, then they tip money in buck. Come on. Woman picking, they the street, they hawk. Still them talk, say, make we no talk. But thank God, say, my egun don't come. So my people make you love. Oh, yo, yo, yo. My egun don't come. Oh, yo, yo. Hello dear. <laughs> Good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are joining me from. This is Mayegun. I... <laughs> Please, as usual, as you are joining us uh, this moment, share the broadcast. I mean, read the caption of the broadcast. Take your time and read the description of the broadcast as well. Share it. Invite your friends, invite your not so friendly friends, and tell them that Mayebu today. Mm. It seems that uh, Kolu is already fighting a proxy war, political war, uh, with uh, El Rufaya, the Kaduna Little Finger, and it's time for them to halt him eh? because he is suspected to have started uh, playing his card, the card of dislodging Tipnumbu and all the scams that they perpetuated last year. The emperor is not going to kind of like that. Yes, right. Now they need to probe uh, the little finger, the little devil, and all he did in Kaduna. I wouldn't say it is in your own interest. Just see every time that these uh, rogues are supposedly Hmm? 
fighting themselves. Do not share. I'm sorry, you do, don't try to share, I mean, share them up. Don't uh, get involved in their war. Dele Paruti me advised us not to die in their war. Don't jump up and think there's something spectacular that uh, you are going to get from them fighting. No, because most of the time, they are in fighting. Eh? is because of probably like access. If they do not have access, like a lot of you don't, they scream louder and the loudest. And whenever they want to kind of silence one of them, for the reasons that is best known to them, right? Great. But here is your own catch. Every time the criminals in Nigeria kind of go after themselves, it's an opportunity for you to see through the mad country that somehow you are telling yourself will be great one day. And they, they, they mean, exposing themselves is another opportunity too eh, for you to know why Nigeria can never eh, succeed or survive. Except for these ones that you are witnessing, you know, using the blood of uh, the innocent to sort of uh, keep Nigeria together. Events like this are just reminders. So good morning to you once again, good afternoon to you. And good evening to you from wherever you are joining me from. It is my live. And we are starting our story. It's kind of a two-wing, by the way, and so many other feathers. Okay? But the two-winged chat tonight, one is coming from Kaduna, where if you are from Kaduna, eh, Celia. This should interest you. Before El Rufaya, before APC, there was no bloodbath or war in Southern Kaduna until the terror sympathizer and an alleged terror sponsor, El Rufaya of Kaduna, became their governor and all hell was let loose. Southern Kaduna became graveyards, courtesy, the armed Islamic terrorists, Fulani terrorists. They wreaked havoc, and under the cover and protection of El Rufaya, eh, they were operating freehand. To make the matter worse, El Rufaya hired enough hands to help tell the whole world that the victims of uh, the terrorism in Southern Kaduna under him, they were not victims. They were just, they were actually the aggressors. How can you be aggressors to those who came to meet you on your own indigenous land, ancestral land, the land of your own forebearers, armed and started slain and slot you no know, slaughtering people. And then you turn around to tell the old world, they say, no, you are the aggressor. In fact, you are doing it because of the money people are going to donate for you because you are a Christian. Oh, some Christian countries are going to give them money. I mean, the governor of a state that was supposed to be under attack of Islamic terrorists, Fulani terrorists, their governor began accusing the victims of being the aggressors. They are the ones who are those making all this trouble and run into the media because Christian countries donate money to the victims of terror attacks in Nigeria. El Rufaya as their governor, not only that he dismissed the problems they were facing, he actually accused them of creating the problems. El Rufaya said, Southern Kaduna Christians were the ones who were burning their churches so that they can collect donation. I mean, that was their governor. But yet, he was able as well. 
mm -hmm. to mobilize enough Uluri Brukus from across Nigeria, the educated uh, Bele Lecturacy, to help keep propagating and say, ah, hell of fire, an amazing administrator. Ah, now you need to visit Kaduna. Ah, I just reach Kaduna now. Oh my God, you need to blah, blah, blah. That didn't last because even in their own 2023 charity, APC, Egbe was resoundingly rejected to the point that El Rufaya started begging his uh, fellow Islamic jihadist, especially Islamic jihadist fanatics. From Kaduna, within Kaduna, and outside Kaduna, El Rufaya was praised by this uh, terrorist. Why Southern Kaduna bombs? It was the best thing that ever happened to their Uthman Danfudio jihadist the descendants. The descendants. Is, is the development like the like Kaduna, Northern Kaduna is Kaduna. Southern Kaduna is not part of Kaduna. And whatever happened there, it is to help the people of Southern Kaduna. Killing them, taking over their communities, their villages, their farms, sending them to IDP camps internally displaced persons camps to these terrorists, Islamic terrorists from northern Nigeria, that El Rufaya is part of them, is to help those people. At least they were infidels anyway. So killings in southern Kaduna to these Islamic terrorists uh, from the northern Kaduna and outside the Kaduna eh, is only been exaggerated. Kenegan, what? Is it today that they are just killing people? Why are you exaggerating it? It's not that bad. You are only exaggerating it because you wanted the El Rufaya to look bad. Oh my God, we actually suffered those kind of uh, gaslighting for eight years for that Kaduna little fingers. But suddenly, the little finger didn't have his way inside the Kolu Tifnumbu's illegitimate regime. And guess who was uh, the antagonist who stopped El Rufaya from parading himself all about like uh, Wiri Wike is currently doing? His own uh, and picked QG. I mean, they love that for cover up. After spending eight, just, I mean, eight uh, wasteful years destroying people's lives and properties and livelihood. They still wanted their asses to be covered, never to be exposed. So therefore, they will fight tooth and nail to install a G, a cover as their successor. And they will do anything. They will move the mount, they will move the earth, and they will move heaven to ensure of that. All to cover all of their shady criminalities. But historically, they have never really succeeded in covering their asses because their excesses can only be merely tolerated by their own and picked successors. There come the fights, the fights of control, the fights of uh, freedom, kind of control and freedom. And that is what is playing out uh, in uh, Kaduna. But before that, El Rufaya, like I told you, by his paid ass nuts to uh, tell the world that uh, he is in fact a potential presidential candidate, a future president of Nigeria. Well, it seemed that uh, El Rufaya had been uh, outplayed in his own game of treasury. 
because his name was forwarded as minister to the same National Assembly controlled by his own party, where all manner of uh, illegality, criminality are produced, their party has the majority. So why would they refuse him? Why would they reject him? It was so shocking until the report came later that he was always, he has always been considered a dangerous person, even by his own friends. All of these were just them trying to tolerate him, but now it seems his excesses can no longer be tolerated. So it was a matter of time before he would start firing uh, Ziknumbu and Ziknumbu's government. It was going to be a, a, a matter of time before he would begin to want to assert his authority over the Stuji he installed. It was all going to be a matter of time. And as El Rufaya, somebody who has never really done any real job in his life, he has never been any, he's never successful in anything meaningful in his life, except for all those uh, useless, never useful courses they always go to. Those uh, three weeks, two weeks uh, courses in Harvard, Oxford, eh, where they went to go and get validation to present themselves as uh, orators, administrators, managers of men, only for them to have the opportunity of actually reciprocating what they believe they must have learned from those places. Then their result comes back as abysmal failure, laced with uh, self aggrandizement, corruption, and name it. Eh? So, yes, El Rufaya, for some reason, was able to put the woods over the eyes of uh, the non initiates. I'm talking about uh, the few who are ignorant enough to see all those glossy painted, uh, you know, uh, uh, stories put out there. While they are victims, they are real victims. El Rufaya using the state instrument to attack the people of his own support set states that he was supposed to protect, he decided to release them to the wolves, the wolves they intentionally brought upon them. Then he turned around to victimize them. Tell me about uh, if they teach them that in Harvard or Oxford and some of these uh, Ivy League uh, universities or whatever all over the world that they currently sort of a flaunt on their different CVs. Come administration, they are born criminals. There's no amount of Harvard education or Harvard exposure. There's no amount of uh, foreign exposure that will stop greedy people from ruining everything. That is beautiful. And that's exactly what El Rufaya represented. So like I said, it was a matter of time. He had no real job. Just like all your politicians, 99% of your politicians are a bunch of uh, jobless, careerless, nothing to show for rogues. I will tell you they are doctors, they are this, they are that, they are engineers, they are this and that. But yet they are foisted on you. A shit hole. No apology, by the way. So let's go to it. About three weeks ago, eh, Kaduna Little Finger started moving mad, having been rejected by the National Assembly for God knows. They said El Rufaya was a security threat. They didn't say more than that. How could I be a security threat? Who told you that? Sonny, the clown. The guy, he used all his might to install so that he could cover his ass. At choosing otherwise, he was out to show to everybody who El Rufaya is and possibly get his own supposed freedom. So that El Rufaya will no longer be in any way influential into whatever will happen in Kaduna. Don't ignore that. But I have once told all of us here on this platform, because I do believe that, all right, that if uh, all of us understand that uh, the enemy we are against, the establishment, which comprises of uh, everyone from every part of Nigeria, when you look at uh, the basket of uh, the establishment in Nigeria, all religion are part of them, all uh, tribes and ethnic nationalities are part of them. They are like a coven 
a coven of evil people that could only eh, survive on evil. So when you understand the magnitude, you know, when you understand the, the, the level of a power at the disposal of uh, these criminals, and you begin to look beyond your typical individualism, you know, some of us believe that when you look at all these criminals, sometimes you see them as individuals that could be dealt with, especially the ones that you have sort of established what they represent. But in the long run, you will realize that the coven, the establishment in Nigeria that comprises every demography, when you, like I said, ethnic or religious or class or, uh, you know, creed, you, the establishment comprises that. So when you now realize that the establishment protects their own, it's like a, you know, it's like a, a swamp. And you know that in a swamp, you have all kinds of things in there. You've got reptiles, you've got, uh, I mean, like a swamp, a skanking swamp. Okay, that is what the establishment in Nigeria is. It is beyond just the politicians. You have your pastors, your bishops, your imams, your shapes, your obas, your obis, your sultan, your emirs. You've got your village head. You've got the market head. You've got community head. You've got different, different kind of these that have their own, the establishments as their representative in there. So it's a conglomeration of, uh, you know, all kind of uh, crawly character in a swamp. And if you really want to, for any reason, if you really want to drain that swamp and you do not have the resources to drain it, sometimes self-destruct button, which the overconfident establishment always keep, I mean, they always keep that aside on their side. And the self-destruct button is when they begin to destroy themselves internally. And you build on that because they have to self-destruct the weakness because the strength of uh, the establishment comes from the reward that is uh, accruing from it to those limited crooked uh, people that cut across all this clan I've told you. Seriously. The reward is really, really good. Nobody gets punished per se. Or if they can destroy themselves from within, and then you are enlightened enough, educated enough, never to reinforce them or re-empower them, having known who they are and the damages they have actually caused. Then, yeah. We can take on the establishment and get rid of it. Yeah, you can challenge the status quo and change it. And that's why it is important to pay attention to all of this, not to celebrate it, not to laugh at it, not to feel like it's a win in any way it is not. And the reason why they still get rewarded is because few of us are aware the danger that these guys truly represent without putting our emotions into it. Just using the factor and figures. And then you do not want to secretly let your emotion override the facts. And then you reinforce the criminals who becomes even more powerful. You get what I mean? Eh? So who else would tell us and then we will believe that El Rufaya is not just an incompetent uh, uh, criminal, okay? It was, in fact, a wasteful, uh, you know, fanatic, a wasteful criminal that plunged generations of uh, 
Kadu, what do you call yourself in Kaduna? Kaduna Itabi? Are they Kadunans? Anyway, it doesn't matter. If you are from Kaduna State, see that space, right? El Rufaya, like Bokwari did in the eight years of first their, uh, you know, a terror infested uh, leg, I mean, reg, uh, regime, the future of uh, four, five generations, six, seven generations of uh, anybody born inside that Nigeria have been traded off, mortgaged by Bukwari's government. But for the people of Kaduna, the little finger, eh? Kaduna little finger has managed to plunge the future of uh, the young and the old in the abyss of indebtedness. Not the debt that Kaduna can pay, by the way. Part of the lies they told people was that uh, El Rufaya has had attracted so much investment to Kaduna. Let me tell you this. They told the world that uh, the Kaduna's, uh, listen to this, so they said Kaduna's annual IGR before El Rufaya was 13 billion. And El Rufaya borrowed money to build some buildings and roads and all of that. And he has improved the IGR of Kaduna State to annually 63 billion naira. Okay. 63 billion naira IGR. Well, that's not bad. But that's very bad. If you actually have sense, I'll tell you. Kaduna State rely.